a ring. I apologize. We don't usually have this many folks show up. We're not built for that. I'll repeat if you, uh, we have a sign-in sheet in the back. We appreciate everyone signing in. You don't absolutely have to sign in, but if you intend to speak tonight, you do have to sign in. If I can have everyone's attention here for just a moment before we do anything else, um, I just want to note that uh, last Friday, Newburgh lost a very dedicated public servant. Uh, Denise Bacon was a longtime city council member. She died from some uh, lung-related issues after a long fight. Uh, COVID was involved and such, and uh, you know we we did a lot with Denise here at the district. I didn't always agree with her, but she was a great public servant and cared very deeply about this community. And I'm going to ask everyone. We're going to take a moment uh, of silence in memory of Denise. Thank you. Okay, roll call. We are all here. Approval or additions to the agenda? I have several myself. Um, under public participation board, if you will note, we're going to add item D. Rob Dakin wants to talk about the Sanders estate. So he will be D, and then others not on the agenda will become item E. Under action items, I'm going to add C. The BMX track, D, Riley Park, and then reports and comments from board members will be E. I warn you we're going to bounce around so that mm -hmm. you know, we can discuss the track and the park after the public participation so they're sort of joined together. So we're going to bounce back and forth a bit. Does anyone else have any additions to the agenda? Hearing that, I will accept the motion to approve it as amended. So moved. Second. Thank you. Move the second. Those in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, motion carries. The consent agenda. If anyone wants to pull any uh, single item off the consent agenda for individual discussion, um, please speak up. Otherwise, I will entertain a motion to approve the consent agenda as presented. Move approval of the consent agenda. I'll second that. Thank you. Those in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed? Those carries. Okay. Public participation. Let me uh, go over this for a moment. So we do have a, uh, a, a rule that if you speak during public participation, um, we do limit each speaker to three minutes. Now, I will say, you may have been to other meetings here, or you may have watched a meeting online where we didn't necessarily adhere to that. Typically, there may be one or at most two people that want, and so we'll give folks some leeway. As many folks, we're going to stick to that. Um, if you do speak, um, you get to speak one time. Uh, it's public participation. It's not a public debate. If somebody says something after you've spoken that you don't agree with, you don't get to come back and, and interact on that. It's not how it works. Um, we're going to do the BMX folks first tonight. They set through the equestrian issue last meeting. So I'm going to be fair that way. Um, so with that, we're going to put that in. You do not speak until um, I call on it. So with that, we'll open it up. I know there are Ryan's here. I don't know who's going to speak first to BMX, but. Um, when you speak, uh, I'm, I'm actually going to ask, if you speak um, tonight, would you please stand? And then you do need to identify yourself for the record. And then up on the screens, there will be a timer. I'll count oh, yeah. I'll keep your eye on the timer. I will <laughs> gently tap one time. When you get to about two and a half minutes, I'll give you an indication of about 30 seconds to wrap up. I'll try to be quick. Uh, my name is Sunny Harmison. I'm a member of Tehillim Valley BMX. Uh, we are a member, we become a member by signing up. Our sanctioning body is USA BMX, and you must indicate which track is your home track. So that has been my home track in Portland. I'm a former track operator in Bend, Oregon for five years. Uh, we are, um, as a uh, members of our track, 
are hoping to, we've uh, provided a petition to have our agreement between the track operation and the park and rec department to have it amended to have the uh, board, the Che Island Valley BMX board, um, as the primary sort of named assignee, um, as you will, instead of a solitary person. Um, and this is a sign, our petition signed by uh, fellow members of our BMX group. Any questions? That's simply, it's simply, we're not, we're not uh, trying to so say I, who should be on the board, just simply we want the agreement to be with the, um, with the Chehalem Valley BMX board and not a sole person. So I understand what you're saying. I mean, it's my understanding that part of your issue is is that the board has been sort of right. So we're we're working. We have a, a meeting scheduled in two weeks to nominate board positions, and then I believe we within uh, we have to wait another two weeks to actually have board elections, and then we would um, have an established board, and then we would nominate a person to be appointed to be the person that signs on behalf of the board with your um, agreement. I think that's our Does the uh, current president or whatever his title is, does he agree to this? He has declined to comment, um, but our, our bylaws state that the board, you know, if the board is duly elected and functioning, um, it's my opinion that the board uh, we can proceed if we proceed with a duly elected by the members of the board that that we could appoint a person to be a contact and that it sh it, and it's in the best interest I believe of the park and rec department to have the agreement with uh, a board appointed person that you have multiple fallbacks rather than one person um, as, a, as a contact that when their kids stop being interested in the sport you have no fallback is that no I, i'm not disagreeing with you. No. it's it's, That's it's apparent that you know a lot of your issues are internal with your organization yes so we're we're trying to clean that up yes and uh, our attorney is here tonight to uh, to talk about this as well so, yeah uh, anyway okay thank that you that covers my uh, anything that i <coughs> all right just present yeah. present um, yeah uh, ryan starfa former track operator secretary of the board um I presented last time, so I don't need to go into much depth, but I just have the petition. We just we had reason to believe that the operating agreement, which the board has been, un, sorry, the CPRD board has been unable to locate, is in the name of one person, and that's why we were requesting to have it be replaced in the name of Chehalem Valley BMX. Um, ICC Don last week on a request for a member meeting to Richard Class, haven't heard back yet. Um, but that is clearly spelled out in the bylaws that the members can request a meeting. Um, we've Why got, what's that? Sorry, what's that? Yes, I agree. We're required to have at least an annual meeting, which we have not had. We're required to have elections, which we have not had. So that was our, the letter was essentially requesting a timing for our annual meeting. So. But he's not responding. He has not okay. responded. So. Do you intend to go ahead with the meeting if he does not? Yes, we have at least one other member of the board, and I think if he's the only one that shows up, that would be a quorum. So, I don't know. I'm not a lawyer, but. Yeah. Okay. Well, handily, we have a lawyer in the room. Yeah. Um, is, <laughs> is there anyone else here that intends to speak on the BMX issue? I'll, I'll, yes, sir. I'll, I'll, I'll burn up a little time as well. My name is David Miller. I was former track operator for Shane Valley BMX and also turned it, was in the process of turning it to a 501c3 back in 09, I believe, and um, co-operated co the track with a few other individuals from, from 09 to, I think, 12. It's been a little while, so I can't name exact dates, but bring everyone up to speed and there's there's some inner turmoil and this is the first stepping stone that we're trying to get uh, done to help pull everything back in order because the track was switched over to a 501c3 for community and we have more than one individual control that track just because with a, a sport that's 
mainly filled up with kids. Kids, you know, change interests and move on and everything else. And we don't want to make, we want to make sure that that track is not just locked up, not being used. And, you know, they're for the community. In the last couple previous two years, thank goodness that it was open and running during our, our, our vacuum of two years. And there was a lot of community that was built that I hadn't seen ever. And it was amazing. It was a great place to go hang out, and great, great time with kids throughout the whole summer. And this last year, some things have, have, have happened that the volunteers have been pushed away, the community volunteers. The, um, the Beginners League, which got kids out there racing, uh, taught them bike, bike skills and you know proper everything, made sure that they had bikes to use, has been taken away, I believe, as well, from my understanding of what I've seen. And we're just trying to get things back on the right track. So. No pun intended. <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, that, I mean that that that's about it. I just thought I'd interject just just a little bit more as well. I, I kind of thought I was going to be a quiet bystander, but here I am. So. All right, thank you. <coughs> Bless Bless you. you. All right, seeing no one else waving at me, <coughs> I'm going to pause public participation at this point in time. We are going to move to action item C, which is the BMX tracks. So the board can talk about this. But first, I want to hear from our distinguished attorney, John Bridges, who's been looking into this. Hi, John. Hi, how are you? Um, do you have particular questions, or do you want me just to tell you what I've come up with? I want you to tell us what you found so far, and then we may have questions. As, as, as much as I would love to, you know, put a three-minute timer on the attorney, yeah. and we're not, we're not <laughs> doing that. <laughs> but you only get the bills for three minutes. Okay. Um, so, you know, what we what we essentially found, um, I'll, I'll go kind of backwards. Shehalem, I don't I don't see anything that would suggest to me that they qualify as a 501c3 at this point, and that's really. The first issue that I have as a concern, um, and uh, and you know, on the Secretary of State's uh, records, it currently only has two officers listed, and, and they're related. Uh, you can't have a 501c3 board with just two two members. That's a no-no, and certainly you can't have it with two related members. Um, I, I, it also appears that inserting um, the related member was done without any authority. It just looks as though it was the president doing that on their own unilaterally, and that's obviously not appropriate. Um, the Shehalem group does have a set of bylaws. Um, they, I certainly would encourage them to engage in the processes that are through those bylaws uh, and and reform essentially. Um, if you know if they do that, I'm probably going to want something from the IRS to suggest that the IRS thinks that they're reformed and uh, appropriate. Now, I could do something in the alternative is if they hire an attorney that knows not-for-profit laws and they can convince me that that's the case. Uh, but I'm real concerned that the insurance that they carry and that the district is named as an additional insurer would likely have an exclusion if they're not maintaining their corporate status. Uh, and so that's one of my biggest concerns. So then if I step further backwards, oh, and we don't have a contract with Shehalem BMX. Uh, and really, we absolutely need to have a contract with. Um, the only contract we have is with an organization called Bear Tracks BMX. Now, that was a, a, it was only an assumed business name back in 1998. Um, and so, you know, once they get reformed, let's hope that they do, and, and can demonstrate to the district that they are a valid not-for-profit organization, then we, we would need to talk about having a new contract and having that executed. The contract would be with 
the domestic not-for-profit, Shehalem BMX, they get to just choose who has the authority to sign it. It would be between the district and, and their not-for-profit. Um, and but we'll need to work through the terms of that. Okay. Does that make sense to you folks? Yes. It sounds like that's what you intend to do. Yes. Um, I will you know, offer, you know, if you have some legal questions as you go through this, um, you know, I'm happy to run them through John and he can build us. I want to help you guys out. Okay. Uh, any board members have questions? I've got some comments. I know that because I was here when the track was built and had it built. Um, so we entered into, I, I don't know how many different organizations that we've dealt with with the BMX from when it began initially. Um, I know that we had contracts with Alan Brown, some of those organizations, and um, that basically it's the same, um, it's the same law firm. Um, but uh, at that point, you know, we were entering contracts, not so much of a 501c3, and you can help me out with this, is that we were just entering contract with folks that wanted to run it. It was up to them what they wanted to do. And as long as they had ADA insurance, American Bicycle Association insurance, I thought at that time we were good to go. So if the district wants to run it differently, which I think they probably should, maybe put it out the contract and have folks come back and look at it that way. Um, and make sure that everything's signed, sealed, and delivered properly. That's just my thought. Because I know it's been like this, and there's been issues in the past too, and it's run for a long time really well, and there's another issue, so maybe we should look at a contract a little differently. And <coughs> whether, I don't know what you think about that, John. Uh, uh, us or, or Fuller? John. Yeah, no, I think if, if they plan to run it as a 501c3, then that's who the contract should be with. Right, so should the district enter into a contract or put it out for bid with other folks? I don't know. It's just something to think about. Yeah, and, and you know, I think that if, if they, um, for some reason, can't obtain or maintain this 501c3 status, if they form a different type of entity, that's fine as well. It's, it doesn't, from my perspective, it doesn't need to be a not-for-profit. It could be a very low profit corporation or LLC or something of that nature. That's what I was kind of alluding to because some of these folks get together and, and they want to do good and yeah, they try I, their hardest but they don't always get all their ducks in a row. Yeah, and, and, and we don't want to get the track closed because of that. Yeah, there certainly are entities that they could form that sure. would be easier to maintain than a 501c3. And so, yeah, that's a good point. If they formed <laughs> some other you know, association, corporation, or LLC, uh, and they wanted to do it that way, um, we could do that as well. I mean, I, and that would frankly, in my opinion, eliminate the risk of messing up the insurance um, and by not maintaining your status. Does, so there, right now, there is, there, there's no real legal Agreement between the district and anybody. Correct. Correct. Okay. So it sounds like you guys have the ability to form a group that we could enter into a contract with. Okay. So is that is that a fair statement? Yes. Okay. So I assume this season's got to be over or close to over. Yeah, the rain, yeah. Okay. And so then when does it? Starts in the spring when it stops raining. It stops raining. <laughs> so we have some time to work this out. Okay. All right, so yeah, so we can't really, uh, you have a question, young man, or are you just stretching? He's just stretching. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so I'm, we're not going to uh, necessarily suggest anything, but I think you've heard that uh, we don't have a contract with anybody. So if a uh, group, a new group, should come to us with a contract proposal in the spring, um, I think that group would be looked upon favorable. Would you accept our petition as, uh, is as there some sort of, or is that not, not, it's not necessary? necessary. <laughs> it's not really necessary. I, again, you can as go through the, I mean, I'm <laughs> happy to accept it. <laughs> you went through the effort to collect signatures. If you want to give it to me, I'm happy to accept it. Okay. Um, 
you've got your meeting coming up, and again, if that doesn't go well, then I think you've heard other options about outline. Yes. And you know, Ryan, you and I have talked, you're halfway from next morning, you're welcome to text me or talk anytime we can work through this. Thank you. All right? Yep. Okay. I do want to leave him with this though, is that I really appreciate the volunteerism. Yeah. It's been out on the on the track. It's it's been amazing and uh, and and it's been great and I've seen that track more several times into a better track. So I really appreciate those folks that uh, work on the track out there. It sure helps the park district a lot. Yeah. Yep. Thanks. Thank and there's nothing that we hate more than adults disagreeing that you know interferes with kids doing what kids are supposed to do. So all right. So we're going to end this discussion. Um, I'm going to say to everyone here who's here for BMX issues, um, you are always welcome to stay for the rest of the agenda. We are not offended if you don't. Uh, assuming that you're not going to, uh, we're going to have a quick two-minute recess so we can kind of filter back in and out. Thank you. Here. He's a mountain biker. Do not spit on him or anything. He is a good guy. He was on our Riley Park committee. I have Ryan uh, give Ryan an opportunity to speak at, at the end of this as well. So um, I'm going to open public participation back up um, for the Riley Park equestrian bike issue. Uh, I'm going to ask this. Um, first off, if you didn't, I'm going to give priority to folks who did not speak last month. Um, if you spoke last month and you really don't have anything new to say, I'm really going to ask you to not talk or be very brief to comments. We did hear you last month. So, but anyway, um, so is it Ryan? Yep, that works. Oh. Okay. Um, I'm Ryan Bowman. I'm the 
call Ryan if it's easier. Okay, it's wait, fine. Wait, wait. <laughs> what did your mom call you? You know, my mom always calls me Ryan. My father only calls me Ryan. Okay. So, <laughs> it truly either works because I'm just confused. Okay. And again, there is a three minute time limit. So, ma'am, you're All first. All right. Ba -dum -ba -dum. Okay. The pressure on with the three minute clock running. Okay. Uh, I'm Ryan Reinhofer. I live up on Parrot Mountain and um, I'm a question. I put together a couple notes so I can hopefully stay within the three minute time allotted. But um, it is my understanding, although I did not know Crystal Riley, that the intent and the agreement which I've reviewed um, was for equestrian, trails, arena, um, and, and hiking. So nature and horses were prevalent um, throughout the agreement. And so that leads me to the next question. Um, where did the mountain bikers where did that come in when the agreement was for horses and equestrian? So it would just be great to get some clarity on that from the board. Um, the other thing that I've gone over, which um, I think is very impactful, out of Multnomah, Clackamas, Washington, and Yamhill County, there are over 210 mountain bike trails. The same search for horses, 12. 210 opportunities versus 12. And out of those 12, the ones that are solely equestrian, zero. We have one solely equestrian trails remaining, and that's Crystal Riley. Um, so I think that that should probably be uh, impactful when there are so many other options for mountain bikers that are also really easily accessible versus a horse trailer. Um, I guess the other thing that comes up to question is all of the signage and the mixed signage, which I took the opportunity to drive by yesterday, take pictures of all of them, and have them included so we're all speaking and looking at the same thing. It's very confusing where no, no wheeled vehicles, then a bike event, then equestrian, and then horses. And, and I think hopefully the bikers will agree with me, it's very confusing and very convoluted to have any kind of understanding between handmade, no offense Russ, handmade no horses allowed, but then metal official looking signs that say equestrian trails. So, and I know the equestrian trails have been in place for eons, long before I was around, um, and that's known, that history is known along the equestrian community. So the influx of the bike trails, not only on the east side, but the west side, is something that's very surprising and I myself have encountered uh, close calls not just with the 30 I'm sorry uh, on the agenda. Well, I, 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 can't, I can't see the clock so. I can't I oh. am I too tall we're going to add those seconds out there right now <laughs> on, right? but you don't um, need the agenda I'm, I'm, to speak too. I don't want it's on the agenda yeah. it's still subject to three I'm, I'm not going you know, just I'm, get, go, I'm going go, go, go ahead and wrap up okay thank you so um, basically, I've ridden the trails and had close encounters myself, as well as some of my other riding um, colleagues, not just with the 30 plus children that are doing events that are specifically aimed at how fast can you go. They're timed events for the kids on the steep slopes, the blind corners, the switchbacks, they're going as fast as they can. Um, but I've also ran into individuals that have confusion and um, luckily I'm a good rider, luckily I have good horses, but the last time where I spoke and asked the, the children and the coach where no rice races were occurring, the kid ran straight for me on the bike, spooked my horse. And that's without a race, so I have grave concerns about an issue, an accident happening. They're kids, they don't know, nor should they. Um, and having it unclear on both sides, I think is a real <coughs> negligent, um, negligent thing and something's going to happen and I'm concerned about it. Mm -hmm. um, the last thing I guess to wrap this up and it's kind of a question for Dawn. When I've asked the bicyclists how did this come to be, there's been multiple people that have said they called you and you said go for it before you went on vacation and I just didn't know if that's true or if that's false and I just wanted to ask personally so I knew from the source there was, I received a call from a gentleman <coughs> who asked that they be allowed to go on both sides. Mm -hmm. We posted it, 
and I said yes. Okay. But the last meeting, I think you said you spoke to your son that was the horse trainer, and and it was clear that it's not a good mix. So I just didn't understand. When I said yes that time, it was for a one-time home okay. type situation. Okay. So not the reoccurring every week or going that. on on both Correct. sides. Okay. okay. Thank you for clarifying because I. That's what they're all saying. We can do this. We can do this. And, and I wanted to ask the source. Brian will speak later. Okay. As well as the coach who came to me. Okay. And they, uh, they uh, basically said that they were staying on the west side. On the west side. You mean, you mean the east side? side. Okay. Yes. Don't get me more confused. Yes. Okay. Yes. Then, okay. <laughs> Um, because that is not what's happening. It's happening actually even more so than just the Thursdays. I've been out on the weekends and documented it there too. And it's it's a little scary because I ride a 2,500 pound draft and that would hurt anyone, let alone a child, <laughs> which I don't want to be responsible for ever. Um, and then I guess- I, I do need to wrap. I have one last thing and then I will sit down. Um, my and this ties into what we're talking about right here what is the protocol for making rules and doing decisions because someone called you i heard you say the bmx text me we'll figure it out uh and which is lovely i love to be able to have one-on-one -on -one contact but not all of us have your cell phone to text you but we have an interest so what's the protocol and process for getting the decisions made by the committee Good question. Great right. question. Thank you. Um, okay, thank I, you. I, I, I did mean to do this before we started this, and I simply forgot. Um, I'm going to ask Dawn to take a couple minutes and just remind all of us, Gail's a relatively new board member, how did we acquire this property? You kind of walk us through the steps of how, how we ended up with this property. And as a follow-on, Dawn, while you're talking, I've, I've heard this referred to as a gift but it's my understanding we acquired it below market value that actually purchased the property so mm -hmm. I'd like you to cover that too. I have a copy right here if you'd like. <laughs> here you go. Oh, or for you if you want. Just want to hear from our oh, superintendent. Okay. There was a court case. Uh, we were approached uh, with the idea uh, that there was a process going on in the courts with the Crystal Riley Foundation. Don, you need to speak up a little bit. Yeah. With the Crystal Riley Foundation. Uh, we were also notified that there was property. Uh, there was some debt owed and they were wanting someone to assume the debt and take over the property. The people involved was public, public lands. There was several organizations. Uh, the judge recommended various organizations. We met with the board and told them what we would do. And in return, uh, it was decided that we'd be the best fit rather than the public lands and the other groups. So then the board met and there was compensation involved. It was, I'm, I'm going to round it out, I think it was close to $300,000. 280. Mm -hmm. I said close. You're close, Tom. <laughs> to 300000 off the top of my head remembering that we would have to give for the property. The attorney drew up the legal papers and we acquired the property, paid off the debts. Okay. And so, can you talk about the agreement? Uh, and and I've heard it referenced a number of times, so uh, the agreement states that it that it's supposed to be kept for just equestrians? Is that, is there There some? was discussion with the board of directors, which Don was a member at that time, as well as uh, uh, with the current board, 
that was from the foundation. And uh, it was pretty much agreed to at that point. The two things I remember out of that is that we would not do away with the equestrian and that we would also have some type of farming going on. For whatever reason, they had a lease with the farming. And we were supposed to have some type of agricultural activity going on. The third thing that I remember is that we were not to cut trees. But I objected. And I said, we're not going to go cut trees, but you must protect the forest and disease comes in and safety we have to have the right by which to cut and we agreed to that and that's the best to my memory of what occurred and then subsequently we did establish a uh, uh, a riley park advisory committee to you know plan for uh, things to do. There were folks on that committee. One of them, Regina, I can't remember Regina's last name. She was an equestrian. She was sort of the equestrian representative. Shapiro, is that right? Mm -hmm. So, um, Wendy Winkie was here. She was the chair of that committee. Brian was on the committee. Um, that committee met with public notice and, and such for well over a year, hammering out various, you know, ideas of things that we would do up at that property. And so, um, I know that we said that we would, you know, adhere, that, and I'm a little tired of this phrase in all honesty because I've heard contradictory things about this would have been Crystal's best wishes. Um, but, you know, we did agree to adhere to those as best as possible with the understanding it was becoming a CPRD public park. And, you know, there would be some changes up there. We're not going to just build a fence around it and leave it the way it was. We didn't acquire it for that purpose. So anyway, um, yes, you were, uh, I, I don't apologize, time. I don't remember your name, but it's I don't remember the board. I was one of the board members. Yes. Um, I think it would be helpful, though, if, um, instead of, you know, um, trying to remember, you know, what was in that agreement, I do have a copy of that agreement, and I think each of the, everyone should know what's in that agreement, and that was why we spent so much time with Don and the board yourself to put that agreement together. So that would continue on with Crystal's wishes and what our intent was for that property. So. Um, I think it's important that you all know what's in that agreement because um, that lives. That was a lease agreement turned to a purchase agreement, which ri um, resides with the title for that property. I'd like a pop up. Great. Yeah. We, we have some. I don't. Unless I'll you want see. Me to, unless you, you want to hand it out, that's fine. But I'll make sure they get it. Okay. Yeah, I can, own. or you can do that on your, in your own. Just make sure it's in the next board packet. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to open this up to uh, further public participation. Again, I'm going to ask, first off, I'm going to give priority if you worked here last month and you, obviously if you weren't here, you did speak last month, I'm going to give priority to those folks. So if anybody here wasn't here last month that we wish to speak. Okay, this lady was first, and ma'am, you're second right here. My name is Wendy Sanderson. I've lived on Parrot Mountain Farms 20 years. I knew Crystal. Um, I knew her not extremely well but it didn't take more than 10 minutes of time with crystal to know what was important to her she was an incredibly passionate person to the point of being a little difficult and what was important to her right i mean uh, it's true what was important to her was her family name being associated with rural living farming equestrian interests and her family that's it and she was she was the matriarch of our mountain, and she felt incredibly strongly about that. So it is very hard for those of us who've known Crystal to see her name on something that is so divergent from what she wanted. And it just kind of breaks my heart. I'm a lawyer. I've worked in government for almost my entire career. I understand the constraints with which you operate. I understand that you don't always operate according to what feels right. But I'm telling you, as stewards of land that has somebody's name on it, what she wanted 
was for kids to learn about rural living and for that not to die off. Kids need a place to play, they need a place to bike. If they run into one of these horses, the kid is going to lose, not the horse, and not the rider. These riders know what they're doing. Those kids are going to get hurt. I appreciate your position. I appreciate that you want to make recreation opportunities for children. Please don't mix them with horses. And please honor Crystal and her name, Bob and Crystal, are that mountain. I mean, they really are. Don't make her a biker. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, right here. Hello. I'm Heather. Um, I run April's training facility. I figured I could be a good maybe sounding board for both parties. I have a son who mountain bikes. I train horses. I teach kids. So I personally ride at Bob and Crystal for since I was a little girl. I, I do need your last name too. Mr. Keller. Biker. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I'm an original Baker, so Baker Road's my family's last name. Uh, been riding those trails since I was a kid. Uh, I've personally ran into a couple bikers where I actually had kids dumped and almost hurt on my horses. Uh, they don't know the rules or the etiquette, and it, you, they, there should be some education for sure. They are gonna ride there. Um, we don't wanna see the kids getting hurt on the bikes or the horses, you know, can be incredibly dangerous. They are flight animals, so a prey animal comes up quick and swift and fast so what happens is those bikers come around a corner they think prey those horses take off and bolt guess what happens to the rider they're getting life lighted out it's huge liability um i am on both sides so i i really i love that kids have sports in all aspects i teach kids to ride horses my kid mountain bikes i get both sides um i do think that not having a spot for people to go with just horses is really challenging. I can't take clients that are new to horses. I can't take people places or kids places when there is mountain bikers because it's a liability. So they're stuck in a four walled arena. Having those trails has been an amazing place for me to grow up and my kids, lots of students, hundreds of students for generations now. I'm what, four generations with Diane Deck. It was a pretty important place for all of us as kids to grow up. I don't know if that helps anybody, but I just, you know, as a trainer, seeing horses and their flight animals and having things come up behind them is absolutely terrifying. Sure. And somebody will get hurt. Somebody will. It's just a matter of time. I don't want to see anybody liable for it. Love those trails. They're gorgeous. Love the land. I think it's great. Um, yeah. I have a question, Don. Sure. Yeah. Well said. Director Ryerson. Um, yeah, I'm <coughs> question. Yeah, I think oh. just maybe you can represent. Um, yeah. It, it seems pretty obvious to me, and I assume the rest of the board, that uh, horses and bikers. bikes don't mix. Well, the people seem to start kind of going like this, and I get you guys are in a hard spot. I, I'm curious, though, about uh, like pedestrian hikers. So and they're slower. That's appropriate and we ask them slow. when we're talking, we ask them to say, hey, would you mind saying hi or hello? So whenever I'm riding, they're quieter, they're slower. Nobody's running Mach 10 down the trail right at you from behind. So a biker is quiet when they're going, silent. And then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, they're on top of you. And the horse is gonna run, and somebody will get hurt. That's that's a flight instinct on a horse, that's science. I mean, that's how they are made. Um, they do have predators from the ground. That's what happens, cougars, they stalk them, and all of a sudden, boom. So it replicates like a cougar, basically, um, to give you the understanding of a horse. So a biker or a walker, a walker coming behind, typically they're like, hi, how you doing, beautiful horses. And they're, they're making themselves known. Um, you know, even if you do run across bikers, I find it very important that bikers do know that they're supposed to get off their bike. There's a great video that our horses were actually in uh, to teach biker etiquette all across Oregon. And, you know, you're supposed to get off your bike, get off the trail, and announce that you're there. And that helps keep people safe. And even with the biker, you know, standing like this, your horse, baby horses, young horses that don't have the experience, Come, they're like, oh, what is that? You know, because it's it's something different to them. Um, we teach our horses to get no bikes, dirt bikes, all of it, because sometimes we go places that you can't predict. Thank you. If that helps, I can be the sound board on that end. Okay, well, we're up now, for folks. If you were here last month and you spoke and you have something new to say, I'm really going to kind of emphasize that. We heard what you said last month. If you're just going to repeat it, you know, I'm not going to stop you, but we'd like to hear new information. But anyway, um, I have. You were first. I was not here last, second. Week, last month. Okay, well, go ahead. Last month. I also wasn't here last month. Okay. Um, I have a question. Um, so I was here last month and I was 
I'm Jenny Geronimo. I live up on Parrot Mountain. And um, I have notes because I get nervous speaking with other people. You're fine. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I, it was a year ago, I actually reached out to um, the board and I spoke with Casey. And we had um, a couple phone discussions and I have my emails here as notes. And um, I don't know who Casey is. Casey Wade. Okay, right here. Casey. Um, and we had a long discussion and we talked about, um, they were doing some work so they had put signs up and I asked him, I said, well, who put the signs up? You know, did you guys? And he said, no. And I'm like, well, who put the signs up? That's weird. Like people just randomly putting signs up, no horses. Because we had ridden there for years on both sides and all of a sudden there were signs and some weird bobs, like homemade bob wire things so the horses couldn't get to the trails. Well, like That's Heather was awesome. saying, the east side is less steep. And for baby horses, wonderful. it's so much, you can't take a baby horse on the other side. It's so it's steep. So steep. I, I took a baby horse on the other side and I almost ended up on the ground. I just don't know how to navigate those steep hills. And so it really cuts down like half of the trails you can't do with young horses. And the other thing is, is that when I talked to Casey, he said that he would talk to Russ and ask him to remove the signs on the east side to allow us horse access. And I have that in an email. And then um, I thanked him. I have an email thanking him and saying thank you very much. And then uh, six days later, I got back to him and I said, well, I went for a hike to check to see if the signs were down before I brought my horses over. And the signs are still up. Can you please talk to Russ? And I never, ever heard that. I just, nothing. Just no response. Can I add to that real no. quick? No. Sorry. 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 I didn't know. That. <laughs> so anyway, I'm just kind of he wondering, asked a question. kind of, what, like what, why weren't the signs taken down? Who put the signs up? And kind of how come I feel like we're, I was really ignored? <laughs> so anyway, that's my. All right, are you Casey a chance to respond if you wish to? Well, I believe we put the no horses up there when it was raining. Russ, yeah. correct? Yeah, yeah, Russ is here I too, by the way. I can't hear you, sorry. I believe we put the signs up when the park was closed because it was raining. Could you speak up? Yeah, we can't hear you. So Casey was saying that when it was raining, that CPRD put up the signs to protect the trails, no horses, because they didn't want horses destroying the trails when it was really raining. Right. Bad. Yeah. I, he did. We did. We had that discussion. And I said, well, I sent out, I'll stand back up. I sent out an email to all of the writers, and I said, you know, as we know, we have trails behind my house and they let us ride on them. We never ride in the winter. We're very respectful. We totally honor and cherish any horse trails that we don't, that are close by where we don't have to trailer a long way. And, um, and, so, and I had that discussion with Casey and I said, we will be very respectful. We will not ride in the winter. And, but this is a year ago and the signs are still there. They never took them down in the spring or all summer and I respected it. I never rode on that side, though I wanted to rip the signs down and cut the bomb bar. I didn't do it because we were respectful, but it just seems a, a, a question. Why Why hasn't anything changed when they you said that that would change? Russ, do you have any input on the sign issue? Hmm? Do you have any input on the sign issue? Oh yeah, basically uh, Russian. Um, when the signs came up, it started. There was three things I was having problems with. One was horses riding when they weren't supposed to. I asked them not to because it was too wet. They continued on. I haven't seen the gal since then, but anyhow, so that got me a little riled. And then they also ran up there the volunteers for the bike outfit. They were doing a little, uh, I call it a balance track. It's a little skinny trail where they ride through. They're not going fast, can't go fast pretty cool trail really and it can be walked on too but uh, they ran the horses up there and I, and we're going well what can I do well you know what well let's leave the horses on this side and, and everyone can be over here and and that will straighten it out it did of course it was winter time uh, but you made that decision to do that oh yeah so obviously I talked to people okay. 
we talked about. And just that there was no conversation. Like we, like, and, and, and I was told that the signs would come down and we could write on them in the summer and that didn't happen. Well, it's easy to just get the email. Oh. Now we know, oh. now we know why, Mr. Chair. <laughs> <laughs> Director Rogers. So, I, if I remember correctly, uh, when when we had the, the Crystal Riley Park um, Committee, <clears throat> we had agreed as a board that part of half of it would be for equestrian and half of it would be one side would be equestrian and the other side would be bikes, and we as a board agreed. We agreed to that because it came as a recommendation from that committee. So she was on. <laughs> I, well, I, I mean, I, you can finish that. I just wanted to speak. I think. Chris, I think. <coughs> well, all I'm saying is, is that's my recollection. Recollection as Minus a board no. member for what was presented to us. That was a decision that was made at a board meeting. So, and it was as a recommendation from. The committee. I mean, Don, you were on that committee, right? I was. I, you know, and Wendy probably remembers that better than I do. I, I am going to have to wait, make you wait. We have two people before you. So, uh, ma'am in the back here, and then the lady over here. I can't see, but I can see her. Uh, my name is Christy Carnes. Um, in all the paperwork, it's Christy Barr. I was the president of the um, Parrot Mountain Farm, Crystal Dawn Smith Riley Foundation. I started on that board in 2003, and as you all know, we gifted that to Young Hill County. There's a lot of, I know we're in today's time, there's a lot of history that goes into this property. Nowhere in any of our documentation prior to gifting it to Young Hill County, Okay, excuse, excuse, excuse me. Uh, you can stop the clock for a second, Richard. Uh, you keep, you keep, you said it twice now. Gifted it to the Yamhill County. Are you referring to the Park District of, 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 of purchasing it? You that's that's what you mean. For a market price that's unrealistic. Oh, okay. that, that so wasn't our fault. That would no. It's actually a benefit to you. It's, it's, yeah. it's worth probably okay. I just wanted to clear up that you we weren't talking about something else. You were talking about when it came to us. So, okay. Yeah, so go ahead. I'm sorry. So it was our foundation, and now it's yours. I'll keep it real simple if it's easier that way. There's a lot of information in what I signed when it went to Shea Helen Park and Rec. Okay? One of them. And I'm just going to read this just so people know. There's a lot more history behind this with a lot more involvement with thought and process and following Crystal Dawn Smith Riley's vision. She had a vision. I've known her since I was born. I'm 55 now. Mm -hmm. So I think I have a little bit of history with her. I also spent a long time on the board doing all the research. This is all volunteer. You can all relate to this yourselves. It takes a lot out of your own personal life. In this, it says use of premise. The premise is being leased. The premise lease consists of approximately 327 acres, plus or minus, of forest and pasture land, two residents, and several outbuildings. Tenants authorized to use this lease premise is shall include and not be limited to the following. Number one, park, playground, and recreation facilities. Number two, camping and picnic facility. Number three, hiking, nature trail facilities. Number four, horseback trail and riding facility. Number five, corrals, arenas, and riding facilities. Number six, agricultural barns and maintenance facilities. Number seven, commercial retreats and public event center facilities. Number eight, museum interpretive facility. Number nine, sports and facilities. And then it goes on to a parking lot for obvious reasons. I, I know that your board at any time can vote and change the purpose of what this property was and is. 
and how it was created. Crystal's family came here from England, and that was deed land that their family had, and she bought up all the acreage from her siblings. And she, like this lady here said, that was very proud to have that land that came from your family that came over from another country. And she focused on history. She focused on children. She focused on education. She focused on nature. She focused on bettering society. She did a lot of work in her 90 some years. She passed away in 2006. And the board members did a lot of work to get that farm that had accumulated a lot. Had a lot of volunteers that created trails that were designed for walking and equestrian. Walking and equestrian. That's what they were designed for. And I know at any time this board here can change that, but you're really not following the vision of what was signed by the Crystal Dawn Smith Riley Foundation board members. That is a very important factor, and I think that needs to be taken into consideration. Also, you're carrying on the dream of the Parrot Mountain families and Crystal Dawn Smith Riley family, and I think that has a lot of value. When I was asked to be a board member, I promised her to the end that I would follow her to the dream, and it ripped my heart out to gift, excuse me, it ripped my heart out for the land to be taken out of the Crystal Dawn Smith Riley Foundation and put into Shehalem Park and Rec. Dan is a board member, she can agree. I held out for months because I felt like I broke my commitment. I really feel that we should be following what that property was designed for and what the vision is. We can still meet all of the public's needs and do it in a safe way. And that's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, this is just off the, I ride some, I'm quick at Dixon, Black Hill resident. I do ride at some of the state parks, and I don't encounter problems with the bicyclers en masse when I'm on the trail down at Nehalem Bay. I don't encounter that problem when I go to Willamette Mission. That they're not, the bikers don't feel they have ownership of it, I think, but they're not on the trails. They stay on the bike trails, and there are the signs that say who who yields to who. And I don't know if you go to other places where there are multiple disciplines using park and take a lesson from them. I think if the sign had said the park is closed because it's raining, yeah, that would have been better. Yeah. And yeah, if the park is closed because it's raining, it's closed to everybody. But you have to take the sign off, or when it'll open back up in April or something. But the I don't know if you talk to other parts that have similar situations where there's a confrontation between the bicyclers and the horse people. A little bit the new Shalem. Stubb Stewart. Stubb Stewart had a problem. Shalem Mountain one, which I haven't been to, they have separate trails. Mm -hmm. So, I don't know if you can do, you know, separate sides would work, but this like, information of signing that says this is what it is would help people. This is closed from this state to this state. And also saying, you know, this is the way we, the state parks have this line that says, hikers, riders, bicyclers, they all yield to each other. And it, those signs would help. <coughs> mm -hmm. All right, thank you. Um, so, uh, Wendy is next. Thanks, Don. I'm Wendy Wente. I was the chair of the public advisory committee that served, I served on with Brian. And that met, uh, it was through basically the 2018, and I think we made our presentation in January of 2019, very early. I just thought that I could offer some context. I, you know, I, I was just coming to listen tonight because I'm very interested in the park, but I think from the perspective of the, the members of the pack, when we got together, we were coming up with ideas based on our own backgrounds. I'm actually an ecologist, so I was coming in with a habitat restoration side of things. I'm also an equestrian. I live on the hill with horses, so I'm a neighbor. You know, <laughs> I have all of that. 
but I worked with Brian and the other members of that of that group and we actually prepared a report and I don't know if you've seen the actual report but the report did give those recommendations that we presented at that January meeting and and part of that was to continue on with a master planning process so we were hoping that that would inform an actual master plan for the for the park and I think this might be a way to get at some of these issues that we're talking about here, which is how do you deal with, uh, you know, equestrian use of the park and then the competing interests like the, the cycling side of things. We never really talked within that group about like a separation of the, of the park from the east to the west. We talked about starting mountain biking tr trails down in that 40 acres that's uh, kind of, it would be on the south side of the, of the house there. I remember having discussions about that, uh, but there were never really any hard and fast ideas that came out of that because it was meant to go into this master planning process. And I do think that, that really, really clear signage could help with this issue that we're having with um, conflicts between horses and bikers. I myself, uh, I heard about the issue with uh, the signs going up on one side of the park and the impression in the community from residents that that meant that there would be no horses allowed and then there were the physical barriers that went up. And because I live up there and I actually hike the trails a lot, I saw that change happen. And, and so there's a, an impression in the public that this is a hard and fast rule, but there's no signage to really enforce what Chehalem wants to do with the park. And so I would encourage further discussion and consideration of the fact that it does seem like a, trying to figure out a way to separate these uses and clarify that, either be seasonally or in shorter time frames or by very clear signage, the share the sign triangle and then signing the specific mountain bike trails for these are only for mountain bikes, you know, that would really help. And so I just wanted to offer that and, and uh, appreciate hearing the conversation and I'll continue to track it. All right, thank you. I just um, wanted to comment, Don, that um, our trails subcommittee has been, this is one, one of their biggest projects that they've been working on right now and a big part of that is signage for this property and we understand we need to make more clear signage. We understand that some of the uh, equestrians that put up no bicycle signs and some of the bicycle people have put up no horses signs and Russ will be taking those down and only the official park and rec signs will be up but hopefully what you'll see up there in the not too distant future will be something a more cohesive and and uh, you know, and and help people understand what's really going on so we we understand that that's a real problem as a board and that's why we've been encouraging the trails committee to make that a top priority can i ask a, just a question sure. um, a couple of things um and i said this sign um who well, let me let me think about this for a minute um <clears throat> now i'm nervous <laughs> um who kind of decides, like, how come it's horses that are wrecking the trails in the winter, not the bikes? And wouldn't it be both of our, those? Our trail coordinator, Russ Sheehan, is okay. the best, just, our best resource. Okay. And between just, Kate Russ and Casey Creighton, the, the parks they manager. They, I just they wonder, I'm hands? just wondering. Those are the people that we rely on to do that. It's well, not are somebody else's. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Russ. Russ. They're well spoken. I'm just curious. It's like it seems like both would be bad for the trails when it's wet. Well, we'll let the experts do that instead of us trying to. Okay. Decide. I'm just curious how you figured that out. All right. Um, so, Steve and then Tom are the next two. So Steve Paulson, <coughs> I'm an innocent bystander. I live at the golf course. In fact, I didn't even come here to speak on a question. My, my folks grew up, I li they, we, they live on 600 acres on the Alsea River at Tidewater. So I grew up with horses, mules. I'm a transplant eight years here. But a pretty passionate guy, especially when it comes to accountability 
and people, you know, not communicating. Did anyone hear what Lisa said a few minutes ago? Did anyone catch on to that? That, oh, I think that we made a vote. Thank that you. this, mm -hmm. these people got this half, these people got this half. Nobody knows what's going on. Don, no offense, moves on. It just kind of goes right by, just like so many things that go on here. And I've decided to get involved along with good friends of mine, family, and I'm done, I'm done sitting on the sideline. And change is coming. But for this, for this meeting and this sake, no offense, like you're an Oregon State alum, I think I'm beaver gear. I'm a class of 2002, so no offense, I love my beeves. But whoever thought horses and bikes on the same trail was a good idea, you know, and so with that, I mean, it's amazing to me, you know, unfortunately, what was your name again? Christy Pines. Wonderful good job, Christy. I don't know who sold this for the below market, but whoever did gave up whatever, unfortunately, it happened. Someone agreed to, to take the money to take the money. Um, but with that, what would happen if someone died? You know, a horse, you know, can you imagine? Oh, yes, that last time. With today's? Mm -hmm. It's gonna happen. But as far as that, I would latch on to what Lisa said and be like, where's this stuff, where's this agreement? Oh, I think we voted as a board. That's the kind of garbage that goes on that needs to stop. Whether it's, we want a fenced in driving range that here is never gonna happen on his watch, or we want, you know, we want honest financials in this community. People are tired of it, and they want answers. So I didn't think, you know, the good Lord on the Christian would bring me to this point today, but the Holy Spirit works in mysterious ways. No pun intended, I'm riding with the horse people. <laughs> so you can find me. I live off hole five at the Greens. But as far as this is concerned, I would latch on to what she said and demand. Where's this agreement that someone said, you get the east, you get the west? But by all means, in the spirit of, you know, Everyone's welcome and all the things that propaganda out there, you know what? There should be this should be as simple as you guys get it this day or you get it you get yeah. this park, you get this and they should vote on it instead of putting people off and said, Oh, we'll get to it. We'll think about it. The sign garbage, that's ridiculous. Ridiculous. So y'all hold them accountable. That's what I would say. Okay. Um. Don, last, uh, last month I asked about the insurance on this, and, and you, you mentioned special districts as the insurance. Actually, I, I got a son-in-law who's the head of the Brown and Brown Agency in Portland, and lo and behold, I asked him about this, and he says, well, we, we cover special districts. Sometimes you, you involve an insurance company in something like this, and it'll help settle the conflicts. And if, if it would be useful, I could ask him to send somebody here to explain to the board what your limitations are uh, with supervision, without supervision, how, how the board themselves might be liable. It, it just might help facilitate a decision to, to bring in a, 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 that's a little bit outside the dots, I know, but I'm, I think maybe you might be looking outside the dots eventually. So. I'll just mention that. Brown and Brown's your insurance company, and I think we could get somebody here to, if that would help at all. I, I appreciate the input. We, come, we go through special districts, whether they, I, we don't necessarily know who they saw the contract. Ma'am? Yes, Peter Ramsey, I did speak at the last meeting, but I wanted to bring up something that we really haven't talked about in the last meeting, and that's the terrain. And, if you, and we've talked about different parks where you have a blending but if you look at the one park that's close to us and I was on their board for a long time a volunteer board for the state park at Tran Creek and they talked off and on about you know, having or not having bikes and they will never have bikes there and one of the big things is that is the terrain and if you look at the terrain on the west side and you go walk at Tran Creek it's very similar yeah. it's very steep they're narrow trails they go down into ravines in fact they used to be the equestrians developed those two. They used to be steeper because I walked the property with neighbors that donated uh, additional property to there. And that, that is a major thing if you can't. Anyway, that's the way the state parks look at. So if you wanted to compare something, you can look at you know the topography maps and they're very, very similar. The drops, the fall lines, all that kind of stuff. And the small, narrow uh, capability of um, accessing the trails because it's, it's different. It's not like a land mission. It's kind of like a blending with mission and trying to break together. Thank you. Thank you. All right, so I'm gonna call him Brian Bowman now. Brian is a... Uh, is uh, 
a BMX person. He was on the committee. Um, I'm going to ask everyone to give him to respect. He's listened to you. Um, and I know that Brian watched the last meeting online and now he's here tonight, so he's heard all the comments. I, I need you to, you know, uh, give us your perspective on you know, what's happened, what should have, shouldn't have, what, what, whatever. Um, you know, be, because you're going to be responding to a, a, a large volume of comments, uh, I'm not going to subject you to three minutes, but, you know, I'm not looking for a filibuster. All right. No filibuster, please. Uh, and I guess, I don't know that I have that much to say, but I guess bringing a little uh, cyclist perspective, both as a mountain biker, and I can speak a little bit to the, uh, the team practice that's happening Thursdays during cycling season, and a little, maybe some other background. So as Wendy mentioned, I was also on Bob and Crystal Riley advisory committee back in the day. Um, very interested in mountain biking. Grew up in the area. Mountain biking. There are very few trails. Um, I'd love to see the list. Yeah, uh, you get a copy. But uh, not a lot of cycling in the area. So anything close is very much appreciated. And I think cyclists have a ton of uh, common interests with the equestrians at Riley, kind of to Kina's point because of the unique topography, right? Like riding a state park is very different than riding at the road. It is very different than riding on uh, narrow wooded trails. Um, it's like, it's just a different experience, right? Like hiking in the woods, hiking in a state park, or hiking on the road. Um, <clears throat> so exciting opportunity for the community at the park. Uh, as a general cyclist, I would say that, right, and again, like every group, has some turds in it, so I can't speak for every cyclist, but generally, I think uh, pretty upstanding citizens. The general understanding is that the east side of the park is for cycling, the west side is for horses, right? There's signage that's actually been up for years that, again, like tons of opportunities for the horses. If you look careful enough, there is signage up there that states that the west side's close to bikes. It's very ambiguous, it's not clear. Where's the clock? Sorry. You can run it. I just want to know where the clock was. Does he yes. not have a, a so clock? Uh, that I, I mentioned, John mentioned that Brian is, ref, is, is responding to sorry. a number of comments. I'm not going to sorry. Back into the three minutes. Sorry. Um, no. But uh, so just saying, like, it is super ambiguous. Signage absolutely could be improved. But, you know, there has been signage to that end, right? I think I can't speak for everybody, but that's the general understanding. The usage on the west side of the park, uh, you could view as special usage, right? There is a high school or junior high, sixth graders through eighth graders for, right, 12, 14 weeks of the whole year, Thursday afternoons for two hours, have a larger event that is a lot of people for just the west or the, just the east side. So we asked to be able to use the west side you know, not to exclude anybody, but to use one trail on the west side Thursday evenings for the purpose of this practice, right? So kind of a, a special usage for the season, right? Which is based on daylight and rain, uh, basically over. Um, and then otherwise it's, you know, again, ambiguous, not clearly signed, huge opportunities there. But I think the understanding is that, you know, bikes are on the east side. So that's the perspective. I can't speak to all the different signage. It's, I don't know where it's coming from. All right, thank you. I have pictures of all the signage. I've, I've seen all the signage. Oh, no, I'm just saying I, so everyone's on the same page of what signage there is mm -hmm. or isn't. I took pictures and put them in a document. Uh, Ma'am, I'm back up here in the back. I'm Sally Cutler, and we discussed some of this last time, the east side versus the west side bikes on the east. You know, they will bleed over. They do now. They always will. People aren't going to pay attention to the signs. It's, you know, not at all. Same thing with um, designated trails, perhaps, on either side. It's never going to work. And like what the family wanted, no bikes. They didn't maybe say no bikes, but they wanted equestrian, walkers, 
there was no mention of DMX bikes when they were donating property, and that needs to be respected most of all. Yes. Yeah. I guess just a point of clarity is the BMX cyclists at the BMX track are different. She meant mountain bikers. Yeah. 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 Jam in front. I have a clarifying question. So um, at the last meeting last month, this, it came up like, why are the bikes allowed? And the answer was, this is a public property. We can't, but we can't tell people that they can't come use it. And I went home and thought about it, and I thought, well, you can tell people they can use it. Anyone can come use it for its designated purposes that it's designed for. So if you want to go to the swimming pool, you can come swim, but you can't ride a skateboard around the SUV. You can go play pickleball at the pickleball court, but you can't take your basketball there. You know, I mean, it, it's, so why BMXs? Why not off-road motorcycles? They, I'm sure, would love to use that. I mean, let's get a Kawasaki club up there. I mean, what, what is the decision-making process for who you let in when you decide we're going to open it up to another use and create a second use or additional use for that for that part, what's the decision making process that says this use versus this one? I'd like to comment on that, Director Rogers. So there's a significant amount of cost involved with maintaining the park, and our operating funds come from taxes paid by the entire community, mm -hmm. and our our mission is to support recreational opportunities for the entire community and it wouldn't be fair to the entire community paying to single out a specific small group um, to subsidize. It's not a huge. There are question riders throughout the area. I'm not <laughs> here to have a discussion. I'm just trying to explain that the whole community pays to subsidize the park and it's I, I and we're here to support the full community. So mm -hmm. we don't think it's appropriate for motorcycles. That's why we don't allow motorized vehicles there. But the it does seem like the best use for that park is I mean besides the farming and the historical aspect to have have it used as a park, as a venue for special events and for hiking and for uh, mountain biking and for horses and we'd like to it, we'd like to have it remain that way for all of them so can, so I, wait, 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 can I follow up on that Director Rogers. as well we didn't do it in a vacuum we had a committee we had a group of people that came together and made recommendations to us we didn't we didn't just say oh we want the bikers to be there they got together as a group and came up with recommendations to the board so that we could say yes or no, right? And that's, I feel that that is what we did. And the two primary things, so there were some of them where people wanted to do um, the old style farming, but they wanted us to build like four or five buildings. And, and we don't have money for that right now. So it was who can do, you know, of the recommendations that came forward, what, what can be done with the resources that we have and Ryan came in and said that they would they would go ahead, their group went ahead and did the trails. And I think they worked with you to make sure that they didn't, um, you know, they were some of the ecological part of it. Because I remember you were concerned about destroying the environment and the ecology that is there, right? <coughs> and so, I, I mean, at the time, you have a bunch of different people that are coming together and, and want to use the park in a certain way. As Bart said, everybody's a taxpayer, and so we have to try to make sure that we are being able to address as many of uh, the taxpaying residents here as possible. We never wanted to take anything away from the equestrians in terms of their ability to ride. It, and, and that's where the idea of the ride on one side with horses and the other side on bikes. On the but side 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 every single Thursday. Thursday. Right. Well, that, but so that was a that, that was a decision made later. But when it came when it came before us after a committee of people, not us, came with recommendations, this is where we landed. Right. My assumption is also where's the paper? Is it right? Written down? You guys all have your turn to talk. All right. 
my assumption is that the Thursday sharing of the track is probably not going to continue. But this hasn't been decided by the board. But I think a number of us feel that bicycles and horses do not mix. And once you let it happen part of the time, it's going to get abused later. So it's likely, but I mean, I can't speak for the whole board because we'll have to decide as a group what, what would happen. But it's, I, I feel it's very likely that we're going to be split with equestrians on one side and, uh, and bicycles on the other. Sorry. According to Lisa, that's already been decided, Mark. That's no, it was a recommendation from a, a group of people. Sure, Wendy, go ahead. I was just going to say, just one to clarify, because we did come, and Brian can back me up on this, we came and presented recommendations, but I don't think there was ever a decision made. There was not a decision made to adopt all of those recommendations, right? That's my understanding. Yes, yeah, so the whole idea was this was meant to inform a master planning process that would continue Wait. to have more public involvement. No, trying right, to but that doesn't mean that no. something can't How is everybody No, no, no. Well, well, not, while not in that, that process right. and that was one person at a time. Yeah, I, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that it, it wasn't a decision at the time. So I just wanted to make sure that was clear that it, there wasn't a decision made at that meeting. We we presented a bunch of recommendations, which was a kitchen sink, you know. <laughs> There right, were a lot of things in that report. But then Ryan the continued to come to meetings, right? And, and, and made and made yeah, and made a request saying that they would go time. ahead and do all of the work with um, checking with Russ to make sure that it was being done appropriately. And so it, I mean, are we supposed it to? It wasn't the committee. It was one yeah. person. And, well, but the committee came with all these recommendations. One of them was for mountain biking. Right? That was one of the requests that came before. I can't make this stuff up, right? Um, and so at the time, he came forward and said, you know, we've always, as a board, and I feel like I'm a broken record here on this one, have said, when people bring resources to the table for us, it is always our intention to try to take advantage of that as much as possible so that we can have more resources for more people in the community. And that's, and that's what we're doing. And Brian came in and said, we can do this. It's on this side, and I, I mean, I, am I crazy? Like, I'll go back and find the minutes at some point. No, you're, you're right. The question I'm not volunteering. Yeah, the question is volunteering. Well, a discussion. Here. And you didn't take us up on it. Well, I chainsaw the west side all the time. Ma'am, please. I think we've lost control. Yeah. Um, Heather. So. I'm, like I said, neutral. I can tell there's frustration on both sides. There's, you guys all look very frustrated up here. I, I'm willing to offer some help. I have excavation companies, lots of things. If you guys all would like to take a ride on a horse, I'm going to be willing to give each and every one of you guys a ride down in there, just so you can experience it, and maybe let's let the bikers come at the same time. I think then everybody gets to experience what we are. But I'm serious. I will seriously offer that to each and every one of you. So just as a... Mr. Something Chairman. to help, I'm throwing some. Director McMaster. Like master. So, um, so the initial signs that were up in the park many, many years ago, and then you remember, as you remember, is I put the sign up and specifically I went through and, and did a lot, a tremendous amount of research on horse safety, how the trails should be, how high the overhead should be, how wide they should be, who should go on them. I put the bars across so motorcycles wouldn't get in. I did all those things. But Russ, are we going to be closing the trails down soon because of the winter weather and... We won't be riding. Okay, so they won't be riding. So I, I, I see the frustrations, but I also understand that we're a recreation and parks department, and we're looking at everyone's interests and needs, and we want to try to meet those safely and where we can. So we've got some months ahead of us before we're going to be using those trails. Bikers, I would assume, as well as as the uh, horse folks, so the trails will be closed. I would, I'd like the staff to come back with some recommendations. I'm not sure the trail committee is going to be working that fast to make recommendations for you, but I would like to come back, have them come back to the board, make some recommendations to the board, work with these groups that are here because you've heard from them already, and then we can come to the conclusion, at least maybe not a in cement conclusion, but it's a way that we can work forward. I really hope, because um, I'm a backpacker and and I've dealt with the horses and 
done all those things, and I understand the frustrations. I've seen them, and and, uh, and with the bikers and all that. But I, there are areas um, that they work together, and I'd like to see the folks work together to make this good I'd for like our community. Because it came up earlier that it's all of our taxpayers that are paying, you know, to maintain, to have personnel up there, and so on and so forth. Let's see if we can come together for a conclusion that we can all work together. I think that's what we need to do, and we should try to do so. With that said, that's where I come from on this. Um, so but I thank you for everyone making the comments they made tonight, and um, I think we need to have the staff work on this. Stealing my thunder, we yeah, don't have to point yet. Sorry, yeah. sorry. Um, sorry. Yes, question, just yeah. a question for Jim. When you say close on the trail, would I be correct in saying that would be for horses and for bikes, and not for hikers? If you, if it, it, I, I, I would I would say that that's correct because you don't because I don't think um, my hundred and I don't want to say my weight pounds is going to put a dent on it but there are some areas in there that can get pretty darn slippery and safe even for hikers. I ask because my dog would be devastated. Yes. <laughs> I get it. I think people will still be walking them. I'm just talking about heavy equipment that could damage them. Okay, so I'm, I'm going to close the public participation. I think everyone has had their, their opportunity to speak and, and move to um, action item D, which is, which is Riley Park. So if the board you know, wants to have a further discussion, uh, Jim said exactly what I was going to say almost verbatim that I'm really going to call on the staff, Don, Brian, Casey. You know, we have a few months now. We need recommendations from you. None of us on this board are trail experts um, but we need <coughs> recommendations from you that involves the input that we've heard from both sides and uh, you know we, we need you to work on that and bring it to us in the next couple of meetings probably the first and most important thing uh, when we acquired the uh, part we did several studies one was the environmental study. We didn't want to do damage, and you guys reviewed that, and we want to keep that above all. But the second thing is, with what I'm listening to everyone, we definitely need a master plan. Uh, it's crucial. Uh, it's crucial because I think it will answer a lot of these questions. The third thing is we're not waiting, we're moving ahead. We have an intern right now who is GPS, all the trails will have maps and everything so that we don't have to guess anymore. We don't have to talk. We can show it on the screen so that everyone can see it and we can begin that process. Uh, I think we'll continue with the trails uh, as far as the signage and those because I don't think it will hurt. But uh, with the master plan, I think it will answer a lot, a lot of questions. Uh, we'll make that, with the board's approval, we'll make that a priority and begin that process. We're going into the Dale, I, I think a master plan done properly is regrettably, uh, it's probably going to take 8 to 12 months. Uh, unfortunately, that doesn't mean we have to set on our hands. We can do a couple of things. What I've heard because of the tension and the deal, I will never we need to separate the two at this point. Uh, I think it's very, very important. Uh, the, the next thing, Don, you and I talked about, we need presence out there, not only Russ, but we talked about the other residents, uh, whereby we get some type of ranger type situation out there at all times uh, we'll be working on that and we can take it through the budget process and do that yeah, so just for the record I asked Don after the last meeting we do have the nice house up there we have somebody sort of a caretaker I asked Don and Casey to look into the idea of 
having a park manager slash ranger who would live in that house. We could offset some of the salary by a housing allowance because he or she gets to live in the house. There's plenty of physical work to do up there for that person. But also they would simply, they would also simply be a presence on the property because it's a difficult property. One that, you know, I'll admit that we did not anticipate some of the problems in the idea that, you know, if we hear something in this office that's going on up there, it takes 20 minutes to get there. It's not like it's a good road. And so we need a, a more constant presence up there. That park is unique from any other park that we have in the district very much. And so uh, I did ask Don and Casey to look into that and see if we can incorporate that into our next budget process so we end up having a full-time person up there. When, it, when you come back next year, we will have cameras. Uh, we're working on that now. There's a lot of discussion about what is and what's not, and sometimes you look at that. But because of technology and the camera ability, we'll be able to put cameras at various points. The other point that I wanted to is that we are talking with experts other than us, because we don't know. But we're talking with experts. Casey called some people in McMinnville that's going to volunteer their questions and those as far as the maintenance of the trails and those. And we're getting with state parks as well as others to find out what is safe, what is not safe. We're going to need that data when we do the master plan because we should not have mountain bikes on unsafe trails. We should not have horses on unsafe trails. And we shouldn't have trails that intercede with mountain bike and horses that they can't see each other and it's not proper. What that is, I don't really know. I'm not involved in that. But there are plenty of experts out there. So we'll be working on that. Unfortunately, I think it's going to take the master plan, like I said, a year. Some of the other things will be quicker, three months. Some of them will be six months. Do you think the signage is in that three months block as realistic? Um, what you we would hope to have some signage up by opening next year. Oh, okay. It'll, right now, I'll make a commitment and say that we will have signage up by opening of next year. And we'll have the signage <coughs> until the master plan is done, exactly what Lisa said. One side will be for horses and the other side will be for uh, strictly uh, mountain bikes. And one of the difficulties is uh, when we do this, there's going to be people who are on horses going to the mountain bike side. There's going to be mountain bike people going to the horse side. You can bet on it. Uh, we'll have people out there. We'll have cameras. We'll deal with them individually. Uh, that's the only way that we can do it. Uh, we'll rely on you. If, if you uh, are out there or see anything, we need your help on both sides. We need uh, you know, and how does that process well, work? It, do we turn it into you guys and then you as a committee do something? Yes. What do you mean? Okay. And uh, I'll take it. Uh, staff when you will, turn deal, it staff in, will deal with the direct. Yeah. yeah. Well, that, but I'm saying, like, how do I get, like, your email, phone call? We, we have a right. We will let you know. And we've done it in other parks. Uh -huh. We have a right to get a peace warrant mm -hmm. prohibit people from using the park. And we'll go through the court process. We've done it on ball fields. We've done it other places. So we will we will uh, 
be glad to do that. Yeah. It'll be for an habitual offender, obviously. There are going to be some people that are just stupid or don't. Don, so, are you talking about WH Pacific finishing out their master plan? They started that environmental plan. As, wasn't it WH Pacific? I, yes. I think we need to look at the master plan. We probably need a little more expertise. Off the top of my head, I'm not sure. Uh, I think we should use the committee that we have, the members of that. We'd like your help in the selection of the committee as, as well as other committee members uh, with that uh, so that we get someone that is, who it is, I don't know. And I will make a commitment to you equestrian folks that when we convene a committee to look at you know, who we're going to choose to do the master plan, that you know you can have a representative or two on that committee. I'm happy to give advice on the horse end yeah. if they can help make everything That's happen. very appreciated. Thank yes. you. Thank I'm you. sure there's Thanks. plenty of people that would want to input and help can, advise. Can we email in ideas? I mean, is there some way we can, like, Cat, what's the best place email to email in ideas? ideas that we have that we would like you to we'll get you an answer there. We, we need to have a group together where it's all sent in one email, not right. 50 million emails right. to them. Right. So if we want to create a little group and we well, can we all go together. Yeah. Yeah. Let's, let's, let's hear what Anyway, I'm just curious. So there are a few things you can do. One is if you haven't already, you can subscribe to the Bob and Crystal Riley yeah. Art uh, e-newsletter that we have that we will send out any updates to you, especially when the master plan gets going. That's the main way that you can keep informed. Right, but if we have ideas regarding and before the master plan, I mean, so you consider it before you make the master plan? I'd, I'd love to finish answering. So uh, second thing is if you can always give input to us a few ways you can go to the website and there is a Bob and Crystal Riley Park uh, web page uh, you can submit input directly through there which I collect and distribute to the appropriate staff for whatever topic it may be you are also always welcome uh, to contact me directly and I'm on the staff directory there I'm the public information director and I think raise your hand if you have had contact with me in this room hi I'm always happy to hear from you and I am the keeper of the database for all of you, so that once our master plan gets going in that process, I am ready with all of my ducks in a row to get that information to everybody who's made contact with me. So um, at any time, anything that you give me that you would like to bring to the attention of the board can always be brought in our correspondence in the packet. You don't have to be here physically if you get it to me, I will, that's part of the process, always get it to the board for you. And again, you can always contact the board at any time, also through a website on the board of directors webpage, there's emails for them. And um, that can also come into the board meeting, uh, but you can do that at any time as well outside of a board meeting. So if you have any other questions on how to get information to us, please let me know. Uh, my office is right over there. And uh, my card is by the door, and I'll be available at the conclusion of the meeting if you'd like to talk one-on-one. -on -one. Thank, Thank you. Okay. Any other discussion by uh, the board on this? Just that we're going to post that outside of Walker's a dog. I guess you're <laughs> that we're going to close that trail. Those trails for now for the winter. Just as long we just need to get it posted ASAP. Both sides. Right. Thank you. Okay. I think I have 22 of these left. When I get through the last one, we're done. So, <laughs> so. okay. Um, That's going to conclude the discussion on Riley Park. I will say what I said to the BMX people. You're always welcome to stay for the rest of our agenda. We're not offended if you don't. Sensing that probably you don't want to, I'm going to have another two minute recess that you can leave if you want. I'm sorry, I know you're
Morgan. Founder of public participation is Rob Dakin, our friend and former Dundee City uh, Manager. Hey. Hi. Hi. I'd like to wait for parts here. That's all right. See you there. See there. So, uh, I was a little confused because I saw the report. I'll introduce myself. Rob Dakin, I live at 720 Southwest Stockton Court in Dundee. Retired. I'm not here representing the city of Dundee, just myself. Um, I was a little confused because I saw the report regarding uh, the funding for Dan Sander uh, State Park Improvements. So I'm not clear, and I, before I give my statements, were decisions already made on this proposal by the board with the proposed going after the, the land and water grant or, or not? I didn't, I didn't, I missed the last meeting, so I didn't know if that was already discussed. Tom? The board passed that we could go for a grant passed a resolution, we went for the grant, we were rejected. What happened was the state called us and said, we'll give you, correct me if I'm wrong, Kevin. That's it. they'll give us so much money, part of what we requested in the grant, but they wanted us to apply for the land and water portion which is another granting process through the state. And we, we're in the process of doing that right now. Yeah, okay. we, we applied for the second grant. I think I got the gist of it. Based, based on the okay. state. They uh, wanted us. Hinting that we should do so. Right, right. right. Okay, so benefit for some of the audience members, Jan Sander Park is a seven acre parcel in Dundee that receive a master plan approval is just lacking funding right now to implement that. So CPRD did enter into an annual grant through state parks for $750,000. There's a total of 47 grant applications that went in for about uh, $25 million worth of improvements, but they were only able to fund uh, 12.7 million. And so the first 24 projects were approved the next project that would have been approved is our project. It was the 25th project, so I just missed that funding uh, cutoff. And what I heard is because there was some little bit of money left over that was available that year, and I've, I've seen this before, I had six successful grants through this same agency in the past 20 years. Um, the terms are that, well, if you take this if you're willing to take the money that we do have available and use it for what you say you're going to do, that's fine. Go ahead and take it. And so what I hear is that they're also suggesting that you go after another pot of money to augment what you were not going to get. That's correct. So you're only getting 170000 because that's all the money they have left for this cycle of the original grant that you obtained, that you're, that you're applying for. The next cycle that you're applying for, the deadline for application is November 1. And so it's a biennium grant process, and they'll make a decision for that biennium grant sometime in early March of next year. So the concern I have is this. What do you do if you do not get fully funded, or if you do not get any funding of this next grant opportunity? The reason why I raise that concern is typically the last three cycles, approximately 10 or so projects statewide get funded out of this pot of money. It's a much smaller pot of money. The typical average amount of grant in one year was about $250,000. The prior year was a little bit more, about $300,000. So nowhere near the $540,000 that you're asking for. Again, what happens if you don't get it? Because this is a two-year cycle. You already committed with state parks for the for the small gov or the governmental grant that you obtained 170,000. So that's not how you can go back and ask for more. So this is where I'm leading up to. So you, that is an option you do. You can go down that path, roll the dice, try to go after the 500. 
$540,000 so you have the full funding you need to do the project. Another thing I think that should take consider serious consideration is that that first grant cycle is an annual grant process. You have another opportunity to resubmit the same grant, dust it off, update it somewhat, and go after the full funding of $750,000 again for I, next year. I believe our staff is well aware of that and, and do it. Pardon? I, I believe our staff is aware of that and, and is doing it. No, they're not. They're not. What you're doing is you're taking the 170000 from that one grant bucket, but you're trying to get a different grant from another bucket. And if you don't get that other grant from another bucket, you can't go back to the first one because you already did it to using that 170000 to do the entire project. Uh, the best you can do is turn back saying we can't do it and start over. You understand what I'm saying on that? Okay, Casey. Rob, um, you, you do understand that this is not even going to get the, probably won't even get the park open. I mean, it has to open because it's um, land and conservation funds, but it's not going to be finished, not at all. I, I don't know what that means. Also, I'm talking about is money. So I'm talking about you're going after $750,000. Yeah. That you you we're going to do something with it. Yeah. And my concern is by taking this alternate approach, it might get delayed out further. <coughs> you know, any any state money wrong, you well know. You phase it. And this is phase one and we'll have other phases coming up. If we get the land in one We'll resubmit next phasing cycle. We can resubmit to get more money to finish that. Did I hear you right? If you get if you get the land or water, you can request more money for the same project. Yeah, that's correct. No, I understand that. I understand phasing because I've done three phase projects already at the same pot of money. But what? What specifically were you going to do with a seven hundred fifty thousand dollars grant if you were awarded originally? What elements of the project were you going to take on? Um, there's a lot of utility work and uh, undergrounding we can do. There's grading. All that has to be done before anything else. Is that whether the road improvements included in that too, Casey? No, that, that, that we can't use that grant money for road improvement. Right. They won't allow it. So then you got um, walkways and irrigation. And that's before any and that's probably gonna use a volume. Okay. I'm curious, can I quickly please? Yes. Rob, I'm not sure I'm following your um, line of reasoning here but it sounds like are, are you recommending we don't take the 175 and I'm do this other don't grant? don't take the 170,000 because whatever you're putting your application for for that first phase you're committing to state park <coughs> and do that phase <coughs> it's 470,000 of grant funds instead of 750,000 dollars of grant funds and all I'm saying is, what if you don't get the additional grant funds to augment your 170000 to get up to that point? Well, the same argument could be made, Rob, um, if, if you resubmitted, you know, so you, you return the 170 and you resubmit your, your application you and you could be 25th again. You know what I mean? So I'm, 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 I'm saying that, well... Maybe, maybe. Give it, a, it, it could happen. But I think you have a pretty good chance. And what I said about fine-tuning it, and that is if you, between now and your next submittal, for the full $750,000, if you're in, enter an agreement with the City of Dundee for additional financial assistance for the recreation components of that project, I think that's going to increase quite a bit your, your um, competitiveness for that grant. And there's other ways of increasing competitiveness too. So I think you have a good chance, but I'm just concerned. The question is, what if you don't get the full amount of the water, or, um, excuse me, the land and water conservation fund money? What's the, what's the next, 
what do you do? Because you already took the 107,000 mistakes, so you're going to do it, and you've got two years to do it. All right, I, this is a hypothetical discussion. Uh, this is why we pay the staff to make those sorts of decisions. I assume we have some SDC money we can backfill if we have to. We'll um, have, uh, I'll get with Kat and we'll send you an email. We'll, we'll take I it under we have your email, do we not? Yeah. I'm sorry, send me an email? <clears throat> yeah. Regarding? And explain. Okay. Or currently, I thought the board be interested to know what would happen if you don't get the And grant. I will all. CC Thanks. the board as well. We'll, we'll yeah. that CC the board. To it. Has the board authorized the application to Land and Water? I don't need to know that we need to authorize an application. According to, according to the grant guidelines, you have to pass a resolution. Okay. I, I, again, we rely on the staff to you know, give, have us give us the things to do and you know we we've done them before so I appreciate your input I'm going to move on I have a question what project are we talking about that's what I was wondering I, it was never what is that it's it's a a I, actually I mentioned it the golf course it's Sander that's the, the house and the property that's right across from Dundee in Dundee yeah, okay. that needs the bridge it's a separate no, 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 it's 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 another oh oh oh, oh. got you. it got it it's just a, a, a new park Got it. Complex. That, Got know, it. it. Being mostly funded for by Mrs. Sanders. Right. Mrs. Sanders. Sanders. Right. Yeah. Was this one of the ones listed on the under the SDC funds? Yep. 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 So. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So. Okay. All right. Um, that closes public participation. Thank you, Rob. Um, okay. We have three members of the golf course committee here, and so I'm going to jump down and let them do the golf course committee report next. They've okay. been very patient and waited a long time. So I don't know who's going to okay. the report. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Uh, you. Need to identify yourself again for the record. Steve please. Paulson. <clears throat> Patience, that's one of the fruits of the spirit I'm working on. So one my wife says I need the most help with. So here's a quick recap. We meet the Tuesday before the board meeting. So the fourth Tuesday of the month. We got Art Gregory here, myself, and Chris Harper, right there. A couple members are weren't able to attend tonight. That's Ron Rogers. He's in Arizona on vacation. And Todd Saunders, I think he's in Central Oregon. So here's a quick recap that Matt LaRoche, he could make it tonight as well, put together. Uh, recap, who was in attendance? Everyone was in attendance except for uh, Todd Saunders. Scott was also there. Robinson, thank you, Scott. Team discussed current golf course financials, including total revenue versus total operating expenses as well as timeline to pay off current loans for existing 18 holes. So Art, working with Kellen and Don Clements, got a nice two-page PDF together. If you, I mean, if you've shared this with your fellow directors at some point, that'd be good just so they could have a frame of reference. It was, it was eye-opening. Again, it's on a PDF, so it's not like a spreadsheet that shows debits and credits, so I'm going off of what the revenues and the numbers and the math is on there. Um, but it was interesting to see the, the revenue, the expenses, and the some of the of what we're looking to try to do. Also, we discussed the potential improvements for the current driving range facility. That was when we got together the first time. Lisa asked us if we'd make a committee. The driving range is it's it's it needs to be it needs to be corrected. There's just no getting around it. And I that was one of the wish lists I had listed off. And um, Art was to engage with Kellen. Saskin regarding obtaining bids for additional nets for drive range to minimize loss of range balls. You know, I made the comment, uh, you know, originally while we're on the record, I'll own what I said, but I had made the comment that, you know, Don, I'd heard Clements was like, there's no way we're fencing in a drive range when the cost of the golf balls is a heck of a lot cheaper than fencing the entire thing in. But he came up to me, you know, props to you, shook my hand and said, listen, I've got Casey getting bids for the nets and we'll look at how long those last compared to what golf balls cost. And as a, you know, I'm down there all the time active as a resident, you know, I hear the golf balls get lost. I don't know what percent of golfers that are right-handed drill it straight right, but most do. That would be. 90% is that what you're saying? I said 90, yeah. 90, I don't know if that's true, Kelly. Either way, that's cool. Either way Tiger Woods is coach. drill it straight right. And then we used to have apparently Yamhill County inmates that would come and clean up the balls and pick them, but listen, 
it should be it should be off the ground and if you're off the ground for the times of the year that's nice and you have the little the little ropes to move it back and forth if we can maintain a putty course we can maintain a driving range and if you do it off the ground you definitely have to have a fence in the back because there's guys and gals that can drive it you know towards the end of the end of the trail anyway so the fact is when you look at the revenue we saw the revenue of the driving range with the limited balls that we have i understand we got more in and all that listen if it's legit you're gonna it's gonna make more it's gonna be a revenue generator even more than it is as it's not legit now so we're working on that um but the bigger the bigger thing at hand this is what i'm asking the board to vote on and consider and consider and make a decision is for us to have the ability to add a five dollar charge towards a clubhouse for every golfer that comes in there or because i would do this and i know a hundred people that would do the exactly what i'm about to say or steve you're here to check in yes five dollars is going to the clubhouse i'd like to tack on another hundred dollars towards this fund so that we as a community and people that come to travel to Newburgh to play golf all the time from out of the area can be proud to say, hey, I want to put money, my own hard-earned money towards this fund to build it so that when the golf course, God willing, is paid off into the year 2026, hopefully, then we'll have this, we'll have a grassroots fundraising effort to move forward. And then we'll have that amount of money. That's what I'm asking you. So what that means is the board, I'm asking the board, hey, they want to take this on Steve and Matt and LaRoche want to sit out and Chris or whoever out in front with a booth on a Saturday all the time? Yes, I know. I said it from the start. I got fundraising ability in my network to fundraise for that project. So I'm asking for you to, that to be under consideration, to add on $5 or whatever it may be, $750, whatever it is, uh, towards this fund is a separate, whatever that looks like, through the foundation. So that's what I'm asking. Art or Chris, if you have anything to add, and I appreciate your time. Thank you for being understanding. Well, I would like to hear some of Kellen's input. If we raise the price on the golf fees, what effect would that have on a uh, number of golfers that we might have? Would that, that, <coughs> do you feel that that would reduce the number of golfers, or would it have no effect? And to clarify, Kellen, real quick, I think we were talking about five dollars per nine. So for eighteen to be ten. No, right? it's talking five dollars per round, whether you play nine or eighteen. Oh, I thought we, I thought we were no. discussing five on each side. He he just for clarification. Maybe that's what, what I wanted. Chris, what was discussed was five dollars mm -hmm. as an increase in fees, and five dollars so five dollars as a as fund. It's so it's really ten dollars. It, it's really ten bucks, but five for the natural increase and five dollars for okay. the for the clubhouse. I, I, I mean, Kellen's going to speak. I believe that you know Kellen's already reviewing the rates, and we're yeah about ready for a, a general increase anyway, because we haven't done that in a while. This would be on top of that. Um, my understanding, Kellen, I'm not trying to speak for you. Yep. Is, is that you know the our point of sale system uh, would be difficult to to deal with you know trying to add that five dollars in don and i actually talked about this last night that you know you know we don't need to put that five dollars in like every day so that you know we could do it annually we could simply you know at the end of the year when we see how many rounds that we that we did it then we can you know multiply five dollars times that that was collected and then put that in the fund how would that work if people want to donate though so we were because of the, the, the POS system, we'll have to come up with another okay. me method I, I for, for donations. I, but yeah. You cannot mix our general funds with foundation funds. <clears throat> so if you were to tack on a fee that was to go to the donation, you're probably you're not going to see all that money realized once you have to factor in the logistics of they're going to have to do a separate transaction for each time because we can't have that money go into our general bank account. So they'll have to run, he'll have to run extra reports. We'll have to track it separately, a whole other banking system that we have to track. So there's real costs and personnel and extra equipment on that. Now, if somebody wanted to make a donation, people can make donations at any time to our foundation. They write a check to Shehalem Foundation, designate it in the memo line, golf clubhouse. Those become designated funds 
that we can only spend that money on that project. So, so any time. The bottom line is we can figure this out. We can figure it out. Yeah. We just can't blend funds and then move them all around. They have to stay separate because they're actually two different entities. One's a 501c3. We're a special district government. We'll have it figured out by your next meeting. Yeah. So it can and be we'll done. There's just logistics. Point of sales and see what we can do uh, with that on the computer. And so uh, we're, we're, we're all we speaking. We're all speaking for Kellen. Let's let Kellen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thanks, Kellen. Then that, that, yeah. <laughs> so in regards, I mean, to yeah. Alex's question, I mean, we're, we're we're under market anyway, right? Yes, we are. Um, I'm currently, like you said working on rates for summer and looking at what the golf course is all around us are charging as we come up to their summer rates. Um, and I think, yes, we are on the low side. That's part of our um, goal is to keep, the, keep it affordable for our community. Um, so if we, let's say summer rate this year was $50 on the weekend for a non-resident. Um, if we add five dollars and then another five dollars for fees, that's ten dollars. So we're going up twenty percent. Um, that does concern me that that's a big jump in, in a price increase. How much under market are we for you know? That's what I'm looking at is right, right. now. Looking at that what the other needs to are, considered so. too, right? What's that? But that needs to be considered too. Where we are for how much under market we are for the for the you know, for the. Uh, Golf, course, golf courses in our area that provide similar to what we have, then if we're undervalued and we're raising 20%, but maybe we're just coming up to the, uh, I don't know, maybe yeah. the standard where other courses are. Uh, we increased last year. Our, our rate increases have typically been smaller in the 3% to 5% um, range. If you do that every year, uh, it's easier to keep up with what everybody else is doing. I think uh, what you guys are proposing, uh, based on what I've seen, I don't think we'll have a problem with the, the fee increase when he gets through with his report, you know, five dollars. Uh, I'm not sure it would be 20 percent uh, uh, because uh, uh, there, there's a lot of things, but we'll look at that. Our rule of thumb has been, since I've been here, and the board's heard me say this in the past, when you raise fees 20% or more, you get a lot of feedback. Usually, if you're around 15 and under, you get almost no, you get some feedback, but people say, ah, that's the price of things. The, the, so the, the we'll it was, see. It's, it um, was, you know, my opinion and shared by the committee is that uh, with the right PR campaign, for lack of a better phrase, a uh, rendering of a potential clubhouse up on the wall, some explanation and stuff, exactly. that, that people will will not think of this other five dollars as really being the, in, in, an increase in the fees. That, that they're going to see it's going to a designated fund. That, Yes, there will be some people bit sorry my part of my friends about it, but you know it's I think most people will will, will be okay with that. Uh, I agree. And so um, so um, with that Mr. I would chairman um, I have a question. Yes. So can, can you help me with this? What what is our percentage of out of district versus in district? The golf course? Do we have that those figures? Oh I don't have them in front of me. I can get them to you though. I mean is it a high difference? No, it's not a high difference. Well, what I'm saying is, is that, and I'm not, I'm mm -hmm. not saying what we're saying here is, is wrong. But what I do know from Don and the mantra that we've had over the years we've had the golf course is we wanted to keep it affordable for our district patrons, and and that was always an important part of the golf course. And and uh, and Don, you basically said that from day one. Hey, this is affordable. We want to keep it affordable for the public. And so I just wanted to know. If there's a big disparity, very few from our district use the golf courses for Zada district, and maybe we can look at it in district, out of district. I'm just bringing it up, but I'm not saying I'm right. I'm just bringing it up because that Jim, was our mantra. 
Jim, if I can explain that the last time I looked, uh, and it's been a few years, but I was surprised. Uh, the got the ratio was around 60 to 40. Which that was? is 60 percent out of district, 40 percent district. We I was surprised. Uh, but let me say this. We talked about this, Kellen and I talked about it, because uh, I explained to him how we set the out-of-district fee. The way the out-of-district fee is set is there has been several lawsuits brought across the country by attorneys, uh, like for recreational purposes, because as you know, we talked about it not we receive federal money anytime you do that you come under a whole set of different laws doesn't matter how you're operating it's just the law so what i explained to kellen was how we set that fee that is we looked at the revenue versus the expenditures and the loan payments and there was about 400,000 400, difference, if I remember, help me out a little bit. Yep. And we took the percentage of that, and then we took the difference that we currently have from that, and it came out almost exactly. And he says, I never knew what I was doing, but Brandon and I went over this years ago when we set that up. So he has raised the fees according to what has been done in the past, and we've always raised the out of district. If we go beyond that, we could we could face some legal challenge. I'm not an attorney. My job is just to try to keep you guys out of trouble, uh, as I know it. So that's how we set that fee. Right. But what we're talking about here would be a particular dedicated surcharge is not really part of the rest of the fee structure. That's correct. Right. That's correct. And, and that and may be different. I don't know the law. I can find out about all that. We, figure, we can figure that out. And just for the board's information, this this would be an across the board five dollar surcharge. You know, people like Don and myself, you know, staff and board members don't have to pay to play golf. We would be paying the five dollar fee. The board member guest gets to pay for play for fifteen dollars. I have lots of friends who love to take advantage of that. They would now be paying twenty dollars. So every this this is across the board because it's going to go into the dedicated fund. And if you've done um, homework on okay, to get where we need to go, have this five dollar fee. What are we looking at possibly per year based on the numbers that we've had? Yeah. So just real, go ahead. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll come back to this. Go yeah, ahead. The only thing I would like to say is the cost of living um, inflation is 8.7% this year. So as of Jan 1, I don't, I think you could argue putting that five that five dollar fee because it's close to 10%. I mean, I don't think that it should be a problem. So I agree, but let's just make one clear, one, one thing clear, the, a, a very clear distinction. He's right. I understand what Jim's talking about. We want it fair and equitable for everyone to be able to play, keep the rates down. The one key difference is all the residents that live in the community and that come get excited about this $5 is going to raise something that we can come and enjoy and the triple wide can be uprooted finally after these years. That <laughs> distinction needs to be made. So originally when it wasn't, that this wasn't out there that could happen, yeah, we want to keep the rates reasonable for everyone to afford. But the key distinction is that people are working towards dangling a carrot. $5, $5. It's like that we talked about as a group, the driving range. A little thing, you know, just working on little things. But this, if you could get started, people saw it. You put a nice frame, Michael Bond, that put the, the nice architect in Sherwood that put together the, the renderings. You put that in a frame up on the wall there, and people are coming, look what this $5 is going to. It's not the same thing, obviously, as saying we're just raising the rates for the sake of raising the rates because of the cost of living. But when all, when all, in all reality, everyone needed to get a raise so they can pay because the cost of goods 
has went up to, to Lisa's point. It's just, it's, it's totally different. So to his question, how, this is easy, because I know for a fact Kellen's going to know this. <laughs> Dump, how many rounds were played last year? Or this? 40,000. 40, about 40, 45,000. So if you took a calculator and you took 45,000 times five bucks? 200,000. Two, or more, 200 grand. What's the clubhouse cost? We've just got pictures. I have no, I don't know how much that is at this point. Three, you know, three million. Whatever. I just have to say that I'm not against what you're saying. I've worked yeah. on the toilet in that triple wide. I get it. <laughs> you know, I know. I'm just, I just asked the question. So no, I know. I know. I, I'm just wanted to clear. It's just a distinction. I'm not trying to be offensive by the triple wide, but. Art, you had your hand up a minute ago. Do you still have something you want to ask? Yes, I did. I just wanted to ask Don or Casey. We talked about you know the net for the driving range and the mats, and Chris is working on getting mat pricing and things like that, uh, and I'm working on getting the netting and the poles. So I wanted to ask Don or Casey. They told me who you know the builder that did the job and the price, but I just wanted to ask: Is there a time that you might be able to provide me with the uh, added cost that this might be if you know if you talk to the contractor and find out what would it take to encircle is that something you could get back to me before too long yeah don already asked you to do that yeah yes well we're we'll we'll get it back to you uh the other thing that has not been discussed brian and i and kelly had a meeting the other day to decide retrieving those balls have been a problem and what can we do to do that but uh, we're looking at those avenues as well and we'll continue to work on that okay. and uh, uh, I included Brian as well as Kelly and, there's, still, there's still my idea that we arrest people that are walking on the course that aren't supposed to be so that we have a bigger influx of inmates so we can get them back in the ditch. I want to thank Scott for coming down here to work and getting up at all hours with his crew and what they're doing and Casey working and Kellen with the staff that's in there. It, it, it's really appreciated. So, so again, I'm about, I'm about the big picture in the community at large, not just golfers, because I'm not that I'm, I, I'm serious, and that's about the whole thing, not just the one thing. Just but it's unique because we're not talking equestrian and BMX, or sorry, mountain bike. It's a whole different, a whole different animal. So, so thank you for so considering just, that. Just to let the, the committee members are here know. Um, so Don and I were at the Blazer game last night. They didn't play very well, so we had lots of time to talk. So um, he and I did discuss. Op options already for building the, the shelter too, for the to, to enclose driveway. We, oh, we, the we have some ideas overhead. For that. Uh, yes. Okay. Really? So Good. working on it already. Put it up. Sure. Oh, I have a I have a question. Just sitting here blind listening to the sure. conversation. Um, it sounded like. Uh, I, I need you to identify oh, your Karen Martin. Um, oh, you just don't have to stand. Just have everybody here. Um, it sounded like there was a complexity with how to get the donations for the fund. We're using the point of sale system. That's a major hurdle? No, not a major hurdle. We would just have to logistically set things up differently make, and make sure we don't blend the funds. So it's, it, it definitely can be overcome. We just have to work to, to so, do so that. The, so the reason why I'm kind of confused is because... because we, the, the foundation is separate. So when you talk about donations, mm -hmm. that would be a foundation. When you talk about fees, that would go into our general fund. So we would just have to be really clear as to how we do sure. it. So like if you guys decided to do a pledge drive, we could do that through the foundation and donations and heck, you get a hundred dollars at 2,000 people, you got your 200,000. You, so the, so the, <laughs> let me clarify, the reason I'm confused is because I go to Dairy Queen or Pan Express or most fast food restaurants these days <coughs> and if I'm buying my meal, they'll ask me if I'm a roundup to make a donation. Safe to point. like Dornbecker or something, right? And what they Safe do is they point. create a line item product, a little product, they'll appear on the receipt that says something in effect of Dornbecker's donation. They then, they then take that money and they literally just make a donation. To they're, they're, they're a private, they're a private organization. The rules are much different for us as a public agency. Yeah, hmm. it's really that's, that's the difference. I see. I believe that 
we can do the same thing Kellen and I discuss this and but unfortunately for whatever reason point of sales may come back and say well we can do it but this is what it will cost you mm -hmm. what we're trying to do is not spend money have alternatives that we can take the present system and do exactly what you want and with the present system without having to spend any more money whether we can do that I don't know mm -hmm. but we had the discussion and we'll figure that out so if there's like a I'm not as familiar with public entities and its accounting practices especially in the state of Oregon but if it's a point of sale thing you just literally just make a product that says donation for the exactly. foundation and you can just you can collect that money and then you just make a donation at the end of the year <coughs> or you know quarterly or whatever you want to do you just take that money you just make a donation the amount of whatever's been collected for that sale so I, I agree you don't have to have anything custom created for the point of sale is what I mean I, I hope you're correct uh, I don't operate that I'm just making sure Kellen is aware and that we do all the digits and wherefores and sure, be sure. prepared so that when it comes up we're able to implement it because remember uh, we got to train the staff mm -hmm. there's a whole situation going on i'm just so, making a yeah. recommendation over right. um, something that seemed like a big problem so. no it's not a big problem it's just a matter of making sure we have it clear in our book so that we are sure. you, you have a choice as a committee and the board has a choice The money may remain within the district because we're a 501 4C. The board would control it, which the board controls the foundation as well. But if you put it in the foundation, it may be, we can never guarantee, uh, it may be more. Uh, you may be able to deduct it from your taxes as a donation. What we do is never tell people that they can. Uh, we leave that up to the, the uh, attorneys and the IRS because we can get into serious trouble if we tell people and it turns out not to be. So we kind of have a policy here. We don't do that. If it goes in the foundation, which is a 501c3, it probably would qualify. But even then, we don't tell them. Mm -hmm. We tell them it's a 501c3 and give them the information. But that's between them and their attorneys. Okay, their I'm, uh, sure. All right. I'm, I'm ready to move Thank on. You. I am, oh, don't we quite yet. So uh, at this point, uh, I would. I want to make a motion to the board that we authorize the staff, Don, Heidi, and Kellen in particular, to move forward with this idea at least, and uh, you know, report back at the next meeting, you know, how we can do it, if we can do it, etc. Is the can I just as a clarifying? Is yes, this for consideration for the like January? Or like when is it that you want this implemented? Um, so I'm January would make sense because it's New Year. But you know, I, I don't know how quickly we, we can resolve all the hoops and stuff. So you know, as soon as we can. Do it. Okay, thank you. Can I get a second? Uh, just comment. Um, I, I was talking to Kat, and she wasn't sure we were going to have a meeting in November and December. So we typically have one, like the first week of December. Obviously, the fourth Thursday of the month is Thanksgiving, so we do not meet on Thanksgiving. I, I understand. Don's not ever willing to buy turkey for us. So we I won't be here in December, but you guys will be. We typically meet in the first week of December, so it's probably combined um, November, okay. December 8th. I assume we will do that again. So that's going to take place. Um, I'm still looking for a second for my motion. Second? Close. Yeah. <laughs> Starts with the name. I wish you could do it. No, I'm just I'll second your motion. Thank you. The move and second. Those in favor, and again, this was just for them to give us a report on the feasibility. Um, so those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. One last thing before Thank we you. leave. Before we leave. Thank you again. 
Just something to think about just briefly, Kel and Don and Don. As you're doing this, this little check for the, the point of sale and all this, if you could consider, if possible, if, as long as you're not under contract with some POS system, looking at if, it, if it, an update or an upgrade to the current POS, I'll go to, to Caravan Coffee and look how they do it. I think it's best in class with how they run their POS there. If it would make it easier to upgrade that to do it, I think that could be something that could be helpful. Right now we're tied. I don't know what the contract is. We're tied with golf now. Still? Yeah. I don't. I don't Never mind. Contract. Anyway, the we'll, okay. Thank we'll, you. We'll, we'll hear about that from the report. So. Thank you. All right. Is this meeting ending? No, no, no. Huh, that's right. No, we're just done. <laughs> it's just right. beginning. Oh, sure. Okay. Enjoy your kid. All right. Sure. Thank, thank you. Hey, Don. Moving right along to where we're at. I believe we are uh, down to action item A, audit review for 2021 and 2022. I did not see the 2022 audit in our packet. Because it's not done yet. Right. Thanks. We'll get there. Right. So, so, okay. So, <laughs> so they should have only said the 2021 one then. It shouldn't have both the 2021 and 2022? I think that's more for discussion for the 2021. Okay, okay, okay. Thanks. I just it was just a clear question. Thank you. I have a question. 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 Uh, Director McMaster. Yeah. Bless, Bless you. Bless you. Thank you. Bless you. On uh, fidelity insurance coverage, I looked at the end of the audit on page 133. Are we good there, Don, as far as coverage? That's something they brought up in the audit. Yeah. That are we, because that has to do with the board, too. If something happens, and there's some. It was the amount that we, the end of the amount, I'm assuming that's what you're referring to, correct? No, it's in the notes. It's in the notes under the management letter, and it says that their recommendation is that we have higher fidelity insurance for the board. Oh. I'm just, you know, looking at that and saying we want to make sure that we're protected if there's any issues. So if we can look into that and get back to us. I'll, I'll I'll get back to you right, on you. it. I'll I'll contact SDAO. Uh, I know that there's a limit, uh, and I don't know what that limit is, but I'll contact SDAO and just give you a report back. You you got it in the minutes, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Thanks. I'll get back to you. Any other questions? No, I, I, I don't know. I tend to go through these things in that, I mean, there are no material weaknesses. There's no, there's no recommendations other than the fidelity insurance and that we actually participate more regularly with questions on the financials, but we just started getting those regularly as well. And that was another recommendation of theirs. But other than that, it looked like the audit was it was really clean and there was no issues with it. So good job. Thank you guys. Okay. Anything else? I was really concerned when I saw this next one, the, the Jim McMaster Rotary Sports well, wait, 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 wait. Oh. I think we as a board have to accept the audit for it to be It wasn't hard to put it in the minutes. Okay, I thought we were waiting for both of them. Fine. Could you like no. to make a motion to do the no. one that's to accept the one that's finished? Yes, that I'd like to make a motion to accept the audit that was presented to the board. Second. All right. Move and second. Any other discussion? If not, those in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, motion carries. So I was starting to say I was very concerned when I saw this next one. I thought Rotary was asking us to pay for a sculpture of Jim McMaster. <laughs> but then I you know, took up. Uh, further into the pack. And that would really embarrass the district. So that wasn't the case. <laughs> so no, the, the, the Rotary has what's called a peace committee, and the peace committee meets, and they were talking about trying to do something for the community that would attract people to a, to a sculpture or to something that um, we could um, portray for the community, especially, it would have been good tonight, but especially um, with uh, what's going on in our community. Um, you know, they've got the civility project. Um, Rotary's got the four-way test and all those wording are trying to bring people back together. So the Rotary Club is looking to, um, both Rotary Clubs are talking about it, looking to put this sculpture up in the um, 
basically the uh, patio of the front of the cultural center kind of offset that tree. It's not really huge, um, and it moves. It's a kinetic sculpture. It's always moving. So unlike our playground equipment or unlike our signs, they'll look at it once and they're gone. They'll keep looking at this. I went and looked at some of these and met with the artist that does these. They're worldwide. They're all over the world. And there's one in Stevenson, Washington, if you ever get over there, down on the harbor, and uh, there's also one at their community center. Anyway, they're looking to raise the money for that, to put to, to, to get that made. And um, it doesn't really do it justice here. Andrew Carson, Kinetic Sculptures, if you want to put that in the minutes. Um, that is the person that does these, and you can go online and see them moving. And I know that people are going to talk about maintenance, and I ask people about maintenance on these, and there's very minimal maintenance <coughs> on these, if any. And they're up out of the way so kids can't touch them but they're always moving even with the slightest bit of wind. But on the, um, on the one picture that you have here with the two little kids standing in front of the community center in Texas, there's that pillar there that it's standing on. And um, that's what I was looking for the um, Park District to help us with. I know that Howard Whitman is, uh, understands concrete, and I've got plans on how to set that up, um, get the Park District to help there. Otherwise, um, the money will come from the community and with the civility project and the uh, rotary four-way test and those words so the facility project that they've done in town reads like this i will be kind and respectful to everyone i will listen to understand the views and values of those with whom i disagree i will work to solve problems by seeking common ground i will refrain from mocking and ridiculing those who disagree with me i will seek to trust and be trustworthy and trustful in my interactions with others it's something that uh, I think that more people need to read, and when they're attracted over to this sculpture, they'll read it. We could have used it a little bit tonight um, in this meeting. So anyway, that's what it is. That's what they presented to me, and I'm just asking. And I talked to um, I talked to Sean, who's uh, the director of the center. He's all for it. Lonnie was out there with the sculpture. She's all for it. Um, and I'll go to the art committee, and they're all for it. So I just wanted to and. Uh, Basically, the property outside of the cultural center, what happens out there is district. What happens inside the, the cultural center is the nonprofit. And Don, correct me if I'm wrong on that, I think I'm right. And so that's why I'm asking. Okay, so who knew that World Peace was, Question. was um, mm -hmm. dependent on the statue? So, Bart. Is, this, is that the same artist that did the kinetic sculpture by the roundabout near the Allison? No. Good. <laughs> I call it kinetic, but I think it's oh, yeah. They moved. Static. It's yeah, just it moved uh, once. Yeah. Okay. So I went down and saw it on the on the river in, in Stevenson. It was amazing. So um, you were asking us to fund the pedestal or to? I'm asking for help with the pedestal, but basically with a, with with permission to be able to put it um, at the cultural center. At the cultural center outside. Is this an example of the rendition that are presenting to do? Is it a? There's three of them on here. Do you want to look at? I see that. I, mean, I see Don has a comment. Does, does anyone on the board have an objection to us putting this at Dallas Culture Center? No. No. Sorry. I, have, I have a, a question. So I don't know if Sean's familiar with it. Uh, Graham Ron had, I had met with some folks there also in the art committee, and they were looking to do, uh, they were going to work directly with the center, and they were going to work with the park district, but they were going to go from one end of Blaine all the way down to you and Young, starting at the cultural center, mm. and they wanted to do outdoor the exact location you were talking about, putting a sculpture there, and then it was going to talk about and each location would be. And I don't, I don't want to get too deep into this about the uh, the groups of people that lived in these particular areas at one time, uh, way back when, and it, there was different people that were down by you and Young as opposed to up where the cultural center is now and. Maybe this project went by the wayside, I'm sure, like a lot of things do one time or another. But well, we can talk about it and work it out. I don't, I don't think it's sure. It'd be I don't know if that overlaps. And then, is it a flower? Or is it, is it? There, the, do we have any parts of it? No, I understand that, but it's, it looked like it was seed or an opening flower and, you know, a new life. Or, I mean, you know, he's the artist is uh, going to work with us. I want a chameleon out there is what I'm getting at. <laughs> <laughs> I like the we are the state community of city. We I don't want to I don't want to belabor this meeting, but Brian, you and I can talk. Yeah, right. Okay, it's all yes, we talk. 
<laughs> no, anyway, there's my two cents. I think it's a great idea. Do you anticipate the pedestal costing more than five thousand dollars? No, 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 no. Okay, so it doesn't even need us. So Don has discretion to. I mean, we have consensus that we're fine with this. Don can authorize things, expenditures up to five thousand dollars off the vote. I, uh, of the board, I believe that you know there's a clear consensus that we're we're fine with this. So, can I can I make one additional request? If you do it quickly. Okay, yeah. Can we um, uh, on the pedestal? Can we do some kind of recognition of Denise Bacon as in memorial of her? For I, I know she doesn't she doesn't work for the or she isn't on the park district board, but she was a pretty huge um, contributor to our community and. I don't know if it would be inappropriate. I'm just asking. You don't all have to agree, but I think it would be a really nice thing to recognize. Well, there's four sides that. of the pedestal, so it'll be up to the, I mean, there's room. I, I, guess. I don't have any problem with that. Yeah. Is that what the board wants to do? Is that something we should do? Um, I would like it, but I don't, I mean, I'm just bringing it up as a suggestion. I mean, and it may not even be our decision. It, it, there's rotary. But right. I mean, I think right. it is. That's I mean, it, it, it's more not that we would approve, but that we would be okay from the park's position to have that happen if Rotary and the Cultural Center were also yeah. on. Well, that by Rotary, see if they think. Well, to be frank, it's been brought up by several people already. I'm certainly not opposed. That was my concern, too, that, you know, it's part of their project. Right. But we're telling them how to do the base, but I, I would support that if the Rotary thinks it's a good idea. If we're paying for the base, we can at least get, have some input on what's going on. Mm. <laughs> so, what are buying see if they said think? All right? Yeah, I, I think that it's been brought up that I didn't want to. That's that's fine. Okay. Jim, you said they're flexible to the location where it might go. I don't know if the construction of the theater at one time there was going to be our escape going down that area where the but we're not we're even at the front years. off the back but you know wind has something to do with it too you got to have that's kind of blocked there so we'll talk about it i think we can make it happen i don't think we need to come up with every last detail for that. okay we'll do that reports and comments from board members please be brief start with jim i'm going to be brief what's that really? Okay, no. I thought it was great to hear that uh, the Armory's got that room opening back up in there, and that uh, I guess they're going to get the parallel bars back in there. I want to hear from the recreation side, I guess, so that's where it's at. And I also thought it was good that uh, they were able to take the preschool kids from uh, Edwards and combine them. I saw that in the report and still have that program. I thought that was really good. That's all I had to say. I hate, hate the parallel bars. <laughs> Did you? We had the you know, little segment seventh grade. We did all the gymnastics. I mean, I. Oh, I so it. that's what happened to Absolutely. Yeah. Um, I have a request. Is it possible to get the board packet out any earlier? It's just a lot to go through. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Especially when you're new and trying to. Well, it's a lot to go through when you're getting around. There. We'll get it out with Friday. City Council does a week and a half. I mean, I don't know what I don't know what reasonable is. But they, yeah, well, that's true. We can get it out earlier. Uh, we set up our staff meetings uh, for Thursday for board agendas. I can rearrange that. Uh, so what, how long do you think you need? The previous Friday would, okay. would be yeah. ideal. We'd have the yeah. weekend. And the previous Friday. Get it out. If, if that's Friday. a reasonable request. That's, and it's a lot to. The Friday before the Thursday of the meeting. Yeah. Right. All right. We can do that. We'll just do it. Okay. Thank Dale? you. That's all. Okay. Thank you. Um, I have nothing. Mark. I'm just curious if we need to get a mediator involved with the exercise class at the aquatic center. <laughs> Um, because this has obviously been an ongoing problem for, and it's in every pack. <coughs> but, but she doesn't. We don't know who it is, or do don't we, know, I think who we it know who it is? I think there's a. Didn't she sign it this time? <coughs> I don't know. So. Right. Do we well, have to submit that if there's language that's inappropriate that comes into that to the general public? 
I, mean, I just think, I just think it's an inappropriate letter since they yeah. through. I, it, I, it just seems like yeah. maybe we should do something. There's obviously a problem, and I don't know. You know, we're hitting one side of the story, but. Well, you know, I, I will say that, like, if you submit like a letter to the editor or something, right, you have to have your name on it. So potentially, we could say that, well, that could we don't thing need that we don't need stuff in the packet that somebody isn't going to put their name to. Because I mean, it, it, yeah, this has been how, going how on is, for almost. A how year. do we receive this? Does it come as an email or a They're, written the, letter? These are hard mail that come here to the office and are directed uh, at either the board. Sometimes they are specifically the board. Sometimes they are to specific staff members at the pool. I have asked my kids because, because I mean it's just nosy. I've asked my kids, like, who, what, what is going on? Like, what do you see? And my kids don't, like, they're like, we don't know who this is. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. Can I make a suggestion? Uh, the Dundee City Council, would we just consider that general mail? Because you're not taking action on these issues, I presumably, unless the director wishes to well, we do, though. take action. On some of them, so we do. So that would not, so mail is not part of the agenda pack, which would not go to the public. So I'm trying to say that was the concern that was expressed. It would be nice if we could somehow get the message out that we only share in the board packet comments that, you know, have a, a name associated with them. Don, you're kind of quiet about this. What's going on with this person? My wife I, would have some insight, I think. I'll have to ask her. I have no idea. This has been going my opinion is the open, transparent. Uh, we've looked into this several times. No one can seem to find anything or see anything. Uh, we'll continue to look into it. I put it in the board packet because I think the idea of transparency is important. This person could come back to you and say, I've been complaining about this and you have not been receiving it or aware of what the problem is. <coughs> and that is possible. Uh, so that's the only reason I include it. But we have investigated. Okay. But I think, you know, look, look, if somebody mails some correspondence to the district at the point that we open it up, it does become a public record. And so it should go in the packet because we should see it. Doesn't mean we have to act on it, but it does need to go in. We, we could set a policy of not acting on anything unsigned. Well, not I don't know that we need a policy. We're no, well, it's hard to somebody, take serious without somebody else could send something in unsigned that you know actually is more important than this and, and needs to be. And we, so we need to be able, those we need to, be able to do those on a case by case basis. I'm just like, All right. this, this is a weird one, and it's going to be weird until we figure it out. Can I just see inappropriate language in those things? You know, putting it out to the public. I'm just kind of going. Really? Do we really need to do that? But. Well, we could if we have to have this public record, we have to have this public record. It's supposed to be put a redacted by cat a few black sharpies and she can redact defensive language. We can we can yes, we can start redacting. Anyway, Mark, anything else? No. Lisa? Okay, sure. Uh no. I'll be good and say no. <laughs> Bless you. All right. All this is update on projects. Again, as brief as possible, please. Um, well, we talked about the Sanders State and the grant that we that we will be applying for. Uh, Crabtree Park, we're still going to replace the culvert next year. Aquatic and Fitness Center, they did install the new pumps. We got a balance report back that there's 
I think it says there seems to be some sort of uh, blockage. That's their restriction. restriction. So I haven't had a conversation with uh, Steve Duke yet about what that means. Are any of the systems working up there, or just some of them, or none well, of them? Well, they're it's working, but I want to make sure it's working properly. And the balance report didn't come back well, and so Jeez. Um, uh, Nick Marcian's not going to come back out and commission it if it's not up and running. So there it sits. Um, but we've had a couple we're alarms. We're still getting high head pressure on some of those yeah, compressors. But it's not as bad as it was. But we're in a transition period with the weather, so we're kind of watching that. Cultural Center um, met with uh, uh, Doug and Jennifer and just had a meeting going over. And the main concern at the ballroom is the Parking still <laughs> been an issue since day one. So I think I have a way to ask for a variance, and um, I will be pursuing that. Uh, Newburg Dundee bypass trails going moving along. Uh, we made contact with the mill, mill owners and told them, showed them, told them about the project and is they're going to be involved with a some type of property easement or um, ask because of the railroad and the sidewalks that need to be the walkway that needs to go by the property so they were open to that and are willing to talk to us uh, they know it's going to benefit their development as well so and uh, I think we got a report back from we got our wetlands delineation back from the state on the bridge area, so that's been approved. That was that was a big thing. Um, to campground, we just kind of restarted that up after about a year of kind of not doing anything on it. Um, uh, we got the traffic report back from Kittleson and um, they're, we're kind of moving ahead on that design and up to 30% anyway. So uh, that's where the campground sits. Will uh, you be submitting that to the county? Huh? You'll be submitting that to the county sometime? The, we're thinking right around Thanksgiving hmm. sometime. Um, we also want to submit that Ewing Young Bridge at about the same time. <laughs> uh -huh. Give them something to look at. <laughs> um, so, yeah, they're going to uh, yeah, there's a zoning change involved. We're going to try and get it zoned to parks and get the master plan approved. So, yeah, all that's going to go into the county at one time. Local government dinner coming up. Maybe we can butter them up before. Yeah. <laughs> um, and we talked about the, the equestrian group. I did make contact with uh, Hope Robertson. She's part of the Oregon Trails um, Coalition for Equestrian. And uh, they do a lot of volunteer work. And they have lots of good ideas on signage and that kind of thing. So, I'm pretty sure I'll be talking to her some more, um, along with the state. Uh, I don't know, Brian, you can read this part. This, this is you. I don't like it. You can go ahead, man. Um, Howard's working on the tee pads for the disc golf at Uber. That's about two years overdue. Mm -hmm. um, they are all poured and ready to go. Uh, they got a cure for another, what, seven days? Yeah. Yeah, about that. Um, so we'll get them in this. 
I saw those. You must have a lot of rebar on those if you're going to move those. There is a ton of rebar. Yeah, I saw those things sitting there. Wow. It's a Howard thing. He's good at that. Hmm. Um, we finished aerating the golf course, all the fairways, tees, greens, everything is done as of today. Congratulations. Thank you, Scott. Thank you. Everyone else is up. Brian, Zane, Howard. People. Got a week uh, early. Yeah, well. I thought it would take another week. No, I wasn't going to let that happen. Um, so that's projects. All right, any questions for Casey? I think we sort of asked them as well. <laughs> all right, um, Pickleball Advisory Committee is not here. It's my understanding they have not met for several months anyway. Right. We will discuss that with them should they. Again, Trails Advisory Committee report. Bart, I guess. They did not meet this month either. Excellent. Okay. <laughs> the golf course update on the right of way easement at Friends Park. Don, Casey, Brian, Richard, we, I don't care. We Somebody. really have nothing new to report uh, at this point. Enough said. Done the access and utility easement for the power launch. There's nothing to report on that either. Only the first part of this meeting could go on this way. <coughs> Superintendent's report. Uh, at the last staff meeting, we meet the on Thursday. I can't remember which board, but they asked about the staffing level and stuff. And I asked the board, if, or the staff, if they were having difficulties. No one seemed to be having any difficulties. They didn't say so. So uh, I'm assuming they don't. I know. I got with Heidi and. Uh, According to her, we're up to 170, is that right? We're actually up to 176 employees right now. The summer high was 186. Last year at this time, we were about 132. Wow. Yeah. So, so it's a huge difference. Okay. So that's, that's all. Okay. Thank you. Staff reports. I will uh, resist having Richard put the three minute timer on, but uh, please be as succinct as possible. Heidi. Nothing. <laughs> Gold star. Brian. Uh, real brief. Uh, I'm doing work with some community groups. Uh, we got uh, next Thursday at Shaw Park. We actually did a bunch of trail work up there with a uh, new chip around that and uh, the ADA access going up the side. And we have uh, a group coming next Thursday. We'll uh, add chips to the playground there. Worked on the Getman lip loop, uh, <coughs> leaded lips around the uh, golf course. I looked into, I was in the uh, board, brought up uh, last board meeting uh, with the Tandy Cat parking at the city park. It was not. Uh, we're in the process of putting that up there now, so that was, that was pointed out. Uh, the new pads for Hoover Park. Uh, and then we have uh, new chips at the armory too that uh, are taking place. And just maintaining, uh, uh, doing our due diligence to maintain our uh, properties as best we can, landscape wise, as the seasons change, uh, it never ends. So. Brian, the Dundee rest restroom came up last time. Did you go look at that and see what the situation was there? Yep, and uh, Josh is working on those. And we had, uh, well, you would know with all your years' experience, the restrooms and parks uh, tend to be a real issue. And uh, we had, it's never changed, and it's probably more magnified now with uh, uh, more pressure on it and use it than it's ever had. We had big problems at Memorial Park for three days, mm -hmm. trying to get a, uh, a wipe clog, you know, the disposable wipes that they encourage you not to flush or whatever. <laughs> it was three quarters of the way out the sewer line, oh, just oh. before Howard Street. And the city helped us out eventually and uh, uh, took both our crews to finally punch through there. So that was encouraging. And then, uh, We've been doing work at the ball field to uh, restrooms too. They get a lot of pressure. So restrooms are uh, definitely, 
facilities in general, as the board knows, when I'm looking at the years of experience on the board there, uh, you guys are quite familiar with uh, the age of a lot of our facilities. You know, I'm talking serious infrastructure, roofs, and uh, everything else that we're going to have to really address, and we are addressing now. <coughs> like the community center, for instance, is uh, is definitely overdue. Uh, uh, downtown, downtown across the fire station, there's a serious roof issue there, and uh, there's a couple other buildings too that we're addressing. What's, I'm sorry. What's the issue with the, the roof of the community center? Uh, it is way past overdue to be replaced. And if you could stand in the alley and look at that, you will see that you know, like it's ready to collapse. But, uh, it isn't structurally ready to collapse tomorrow, but uh, it, it, it is. So it's Boeing. It is definitely major Boeing, and the gutters that fall off. We've got dry rot, and so that's that's something we need to address because that's a very complicated building. It's like any other building; we have to address it. But the, just the infrastructure on any of the buildings we have, a lot of them are older buildings, as, as well as the facilities in the park, with the playgrounds and stuff like that. There's. It's a neighborhood playgrounds, and that's always been the case that after 20 years or whatever, you know, the, the times have changed and they get a lot of use. And, uh, so we, we're putting some focus on that. Too. Done. Silver Star. Scott. Still looking for an assistant and a full time mechanic, and I'd like to publicly thank uh, Casey for stepping up and taking care of all the mechanical work. And all kinds of special projects like verification. Gold star. Is Julia online, by the way? No. She's on vacation, I think. Where? Gallo. Nothing to report that wasn't talked about through the golf committee stuff. Gold star. Casey, anything else you need to talk about? Uh, not really, no. Gold star. Richard. My mom said it's uh, bedtime, so I'm waiting for this meeting to get over with. <laughs> so I have nothing. I'm good. Silver Star. Cap. Quickly, we added a new position, a full-time position on my staff, an evening lead receptionist, which is really exciting and is going to help us in so many ways. Uh, we promoted Amber Hill after she worked one full year on that evening shift and disturbed the day. Um, also, I just wanted to invite you all to the first meeting of Newburgh City Club. We're resuming on-site, in-person, at the Cultural Center at uh, noon next Tuesday, November 1st. That's it. Gold star. Okay. Do we have any other discussion about the uh, citizen comments that we haven't discussed already? Just the one assuming that we're taking care of the issues that were shown in those, those comments. There was the one about the, at the pool, and then there was also the disc golf course. I'm assuming that we have. The, um, the situation um, that, that was talked about with the um, person that broke their ankle at Hoover mm -hmm. Park. Oh. Um, yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm concerned um, that uh, Dundee um, has uh, I pretty much eradicated all those um, squirrels from digging out there before I left. And now they're back, and they're going to be heading for the ball fields. And they I can speak to that. Let, let me finish. And they can definitely, you know, break a leg if we let them get too bad. And I know that it's and it might be a good time to go out to Crabtree Park and dis <coughs> disc that part because it's got some real issues out there that that we could have some people get hurt. Go ahead. Sorry, Brian. Well, I was going to save you a little bit of air there, but uh, you're absolutely right about Dundee, and uh, we had our rat guy go out there, our gopher guy, and uh, he's eradicated them as we speak. So you have somebody on it? Uh, absolutely. Thanks. Because I just, you mentioned it, sir. Right, I just wanted to make sure because that's a, that's. I think it's very important what you brought up. So. Okay. Crabtree, you're absolutely right. Okay. Um, the risk of my wrath, does anybody have any miscellaneous info <laughs> they feel they need to expound upon at this point? Yeah, to time. decide whether you're going to meet in December. December 1. It's a Thursday, I assume. Okay. Right. Did we say something earlier that we were going to? Because was there some? 
Are you going to do no. the holiday party? Is that we've combined? No. 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 We, we did mention earlier in the meeting that typically we meet the first week of December in lieu of Was there something that we were supposed to talk about? Though? It was about the golf course and the fee and whether we are going to state that. Oh. It's going to be discussed at that meeting. Oh. Not only that, probably in the agenda, I'll throw the budget calendar and those type things because we're so starting the new year. First Thursday in December. Yeah. yeah. Can we just make it like a short meeting? Can we make it a short meeting? We can hold yeah. Okay. Okay. I mean, the old public participation will do it. Get us in that. So. Yeah. Um, Quickly before we leave, I did have a request from one board member who wanted to have an executive session to discuss a couple of personnel items which we are allowed to do in executive session. Um, in reviewing the ORS statutes on public meetings, though, I ran across a rule I was not familiar with that you have to publicly notice an executive session the same way you do a regular meeting, which sort of doesn't make much sense because the whole point of executive session is to talk about something the public doesn't get to listen to anyway. <laughs> That aside, um, so we will schedule an executive session at the end of the next meeting. Yeah, I won't be here. I'll be on my way to another country December 1st, so yeah. we can move that to January. Yeah, I come too. What's that? <laughs> Nothing. Um, I will check with the board member who requested the executive session to see if that person is willing to wait another month. It's not going to be a big major. So. Okay. With that, I will accept the motion to adjourn. Do not require a second. Do we have a motion to adjourn? Those in favor say aye. 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 Thank you for coming.